Don't you have a New Bordeaux. A modern city with traditional southern values. I underestimated how far he was going to go. What he was willing to do. Visit the historic French Ward and enjoy local cuisine at one of our five-star restaurants. Killing them wasn't enough. Lincoln Clay was using them to send a message. Or spend the afternoon in the bayou and take in its natural splendor. Sal Marcano had no idea what he was going to unleash. New Bordeaux. Safe. Family-oriented fun. Make it your next vacation destination. This city survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, and God knows how many hurricanes. But when Lincoln Clay went after the mob, he inflicted more damage than all the wars and hurricanes combined. Lincoln's mother abandoned him in, oh, 1947, a couple of years after he was born. His mother, I heard she was Dominican. I always figured his father was white, maybe even not Italian. Not that it mattered. Back then, if you look black, you black. Same as today, I suppose. He stayed at the orphanage until 1958. Well, when did you meet Lincoln Clay? 1966. I was running black ops out of Laos on behalf of the CIA. He was loaned out to me via joint CIA DOD task force. He's a quiet boy. Good boy. Two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He served his country with honor and distinction. After the city closed the orphanage, he fell in with Sammy Robinson. Sammy ran the black mob over in Delray Hollow. I can't say I approve. But often colored boys didn't have a lot of options back then. Boys like Lincoln, the ones who've been abandoned, they're always looking for a home. Always looking for a place to belong. I think he thought he'd find it in the army. Thing is, once that's lost, never get it back again. When he returned from the war, Lincoln ended back up over at Sammy's. Now Sammy owed the Italian mob a whole lot of money, and he needed Lincoln's help. It's a damn shame what happened. It breaks my heart. Still say this is the craziest goddamn thing I ever heard. Using real money to rob the feds. Well, hell, man, not like this is our cash. This all came from Skeletta. Besides, peanuts compared to what we're gonna haul out of there. Is everything we need to burn? Yeah, that's it. I grabbed the keys to the truck, then we can get the fuck out of here. Hey, man, grab those keys. Still not sure about leaving him like this. He came through mm -hmm. with the truck just like mm -hmm. we asked. Even grease his partner to make it look good. Mm -hmm. You got mm -hmm. guys, why mm -hmm. take the chance? Get in the other room. Mm -hmm. Grab him. Mm -hmm. oh, man, we don't. Mm, all right then, that's that. Goddamn. We should get going. You got the keys so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here.
Take it easy heading to town. We don't need the cops crawling up our asses. My old man wanted us to keep one of the guards alive, help throw the feds off the trail. Like you said, I'll take a chance. Besides, if I learn anything from being over in Nam, someone's willing to flip sides once, we're probably willing to do it a second time. Fuck you in the process. So answer me this. What's the craziest thing you saw over there? You don't want to know. Hell, man, I'm a taxpayer. I got the right to know how my money's being spent. Oh, Georgie Marcano pays taxes. Damn right I do. That's how they got Al Capone, and I ain't going to prison for no fucking tax bill. Huh. So come on, you gonna answer the question or what? We, uh... We on the coast of Quang Nai. Evacuating the civvies for Charlie overran every day. Anyway, we getting them onto a medical ship. And this woman walks up. She got a baby in one hand and the leash to a pig in the other. She starts up the ramp, and the MP stops her and tells her, you can only bring one thing on board. So she tosses the baby into the water. MP goes ape, tells someone dive in after the kid, starts screaming at the woman, wants to know what the fuck she's thinking. You know what she says to him? She says, I can always have another baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, man, you asked. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were going to tell me a story about some gook getting his dick blown off or something. I mean, God damn. It's not a fault. But not like you think. Conditions over there, man. Jesus Christ. One day, you're raising cattle, tending your rice. Next day, everything bombed flat. You put people up against the wall, they will do anything to survive. That better have been one delicious fucking pig. Back it up to the loading dock. Some of these fellas might get a little uh, rough with the language and... Well, I ain't like I've never been called nigger before. I know, but I'm just saying, if I go along with it, ain't nothing poison. The only thing I care about is getting our hands on that money. When I say something about being hot, that's when we make our move. All right. All right, here we go. Put your IDs up to the glass. We're part of the Boeing crew. What the fuck's this shit heel doing here? Affirmative action. You know how it is. Old country is spinning around a goddamn toilet. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burning room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. Small bills, mostly. I'll let Miss Gale call up to your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Appreciate it. You need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. You can pick it up on the way out. Buying rooms down in the cellar. This way. I ain't seen y'all around these parts before. Y'all was over in Georgia for a while. He just got out the service. And my cousin's been trying to get on here for over a year now. Was in the Navy for two tours. Got medals falling out of his ass. Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. Sad day when a God-fearing white man can't get a job. But ain't your nigga who staggers in his hide on the spot. Bastards better not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Christ, look at that. 
Didn't know y'all held that much gold. Yeah, Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. It's here, then it gets sent to Dallas, then it comes back. Yeah, it doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. Here we are. <sighs> Put those bags on the table there. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. It gets the job done. Only time there's a problem is when the flu clogs up. Fuck. That's some heat right there. We used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent flame. Yeah, some guy come around the house trying to switch me over to oil. I told him I wasn't interested. No, I never was neither till I saw this. At least with oil, we don't get soot all over the goddamn place. God, that guy was an asshole. We need to move. Danny and Ellis should be coming up any time now. All right, give me a second. <clears throat> right, you take care of those guards. Keep your ass down. You don't want them getting a drop on us. I know what the fuck I'm doing. we've been written now. Called over there last night. Told them I wanted to sell it. Told them they needed to be out in two weeks. And the man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30-day notice. That's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks. Let's go, man. This place ain't gonna rob itself. This combination Skeleta got us is legit. Well, I'll be damned. All right, go for it, Godzilla. Holy fucking <laughs> shit. It's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna take care of this room. You see what you can get from outside. <clears throat> Once these boys punch you with that drill, we're gonna start throwing this down. <clears throat> God damn it. You triggered the fucking alarm? Shit, I didn't know that this cage was on a different system. All right, we're gonna hold off the guards until Danny's done drilling. Hey, we're gonna pull this off. Jesus Christ, it's a fucking robbery! I'm going for help! Hold on, I think this boy matches the suspect. Walk out of here is if we get the weapons stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch our asses. My old man gonna shit a brick when he hears about this. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, open! Give me that damn thing. Shit, 
Listen, man, these guys ain't fucking around. Face way worse than this over in Nam. Little smoke don't be shit. Stay close to the vault, watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. Be crazy than a shit house rat. The same way. Well, Sammy had men all over them. Now, one of them worked at a cleaner's and stole the uniforms Georgie Marcano and Lincoln Clay wore on the day of the robbery. Another one was a janitor at the Federal Reserve, and he provided a rough layout. The robbery of the Federal Reserve was timed perfectly, and none of it would have been possible without the involvement of Sammy Robinson, Lincoln Clay, and the rest of the black mob. You just come from Vietnam? That's right. I was a Marine in the Pacific. You can take it from me. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're back. You understand? People around here, they don't... They don't get it. Never will. <laughs> Keep your ass out of trouble. caught up crossing the bridge. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for my stepbrother, Lincoln Clay. Have you seen him? He used to get ticked off if you were even a minute late. Kiss my ass. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> How was the trip? Me is how this is the first time in four years and somebody telling me where to go, what to do, or how to do it. It was fucking great. <laughs> mm. What's new with the old man? Man, don't even get me started on Pops. He used to pull his head out of his ass. Same as ever then. Brother, you have no fucking idea. Damn, Ellis. She's looking good. <laughs> Just like I left her. Man, even I know not to fuck around with your cop. Mm. All right, come on. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Sammy's doing all right. Ever since we got your telegram about coming home, he's been climbing the walls. What if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey like he was expecting you to come strolling up the sidewalk. Don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. He'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama Hell, you know how he gets. Remember Marty and Ron Langford? Sure. They moved up to Empire Bay a year or so after you shipped out. Started selling weed. They call and ask me if I want some. I say, sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin, that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I got to talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words, and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses, and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. Fucking around the side. That was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. Got their throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. There's no way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgie says he can keep his old man from fighting out. We'll still clear the hollow with Frisco, just selling the French war. Georgie's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgie's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kiddie pool. Come in on it with us. I bet he'd agree to a three-way split. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah, all right. Come on, we're going through the front. I ain't having your wall here. I ask you to back down. Look who I found panhandling out in front of the train station. Pleasure, man. Welcome back, baby. Boy, I send you to bring Lincoln Claire home. Not the big nigga who ate him. 
Well, shit, old man. I finally went somewhere they knew how to cook. <laughs> Welcome home, son. How are you? I'll be better once I get some of that shine in me. I always did love corn whiskey. I would like to make a toast. My father used to say that the real worth of a man came from the mark he left on the world. When Lincoln first told me he was joining the military, I was against it. Too dangerous, I say. Let those people fight their own war, I say. But then I realize Lincoln needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I'm so, so proud of you. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. <laughs> good to see you. You're so good. <laughs> nice seeing you, Lincoln. Oh, I kept you in my prayers. I really appreciate that, Father. <laughs> now, who wants to get shit faced? <laughs> Woo! It's hard to explain what it's like coming home from war. Elation, fear. Imagine being trapped in a dark room and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape from any of it. And then, one day, a door opens, and you're free to go, just like that. The thing is, you made your peace with your terror and your fear of death. And now part of you is afraid to leave it behind. But what choice do you have? Every soldier has to walk through that door one way or another. Man, that whiskey's going to in the morning. Hell, man, just sleep it off. The room's the same as you left it. I'm going to take the basement. <laughs> the basement? Why the fuck you want to crash down there? I'll see you in the morning. Man, that wall must have really fucked you up. Barely have two nickels to rub together. Now we're paying for all that food. Jesus Christ! Watch that mouth of yours. We wouldn't be in this mess if you would have listened to me. What mess? It's not something you need to worry about, Lincoln. I got it under control. Under control? God damn it! You need. Boy, I'm not warning you again. Have it your way, old man. Let him be. He needs to cool off. You mind telling me what's got him so riled up? We've been having uh, problems with the Haitians. But like I say, I got it under control. Well, truck's all loaded up. I figured we got enough out there for... Should I, should I come back? In honor of your returning to us safe and sound, I made a donation to Father James here. Supplied him with food he can hand out to some of our needier family. Well, I was hoping you'd lend me a hand, Lincoln, and give you a chance to see the neighborhood. This thing with the Haitians, how serious is it? Ah, you know Ellis. Someone looks at him the wrong way, he's on them like a wet dog. Like I said, I can now uh, come back. Nonsense. 
Link on needs to get out. Enjoy the day. Besides, be good for the two of you to spend some time together. Mm. Go on. Those people waiting on their food. Oh, I saw Langan a couple times once he was first back. <laughs> he told me he wanted to leave town, head out to California. Now, he had a friend in the service who could get him a job working at the Mare Island shipyard. And the only reason he came back was to tell Sammy and Ellis goodbye. But then he found out about the trouble Sammy was having with those Haitians. So he decided to stay and help. Those Haitians, they are bad news. No talking Lankin out of it. Whatever else he might have become, Lankin was always loyal. Well, then most likely. Three month apprenticeship to start, then the union lets you in. You tell Sammy and Ellis? Not yet. I'm gonna wait a few days. Didn't want to spring it on them since I just got back. Well, they won't like to hear it, but they'll come around. You need to do what's best for you. Go ahead and start serving those folks. I'll be back. Give Sammy my best, Lincoln. Yes, sir. Warm meal, warm heart. Oh, sure. Thanks. How your day been? You delivering a real blessing here, Lincoln. Thank you. Blessing's mine, ma'am. Couple of days back and they already got you working? Ah, I'm happy to do it. Means a hell of a lot to all of us. Don't get old, son. It's a fucking shit show. <laughs> I'll see what I can do about that. Hey there, Lincoln. How are you, Regine? I'm good. Nice to see you around the holler again. Nice to see those big brown eyes again. Well, they'll be over at my aunt's place with the rest of me. You should stop by. Maybe I'll do that. Lincoln, we got trouble! Run, Regine! Once we're done with you, Lincoln! Sammy's next! Get away! Get away! You boys ought to be You're not with us! You are against us! Francois Papadoc Duvalier was elected president of Haiti in 1957. By 1959, he had created a secret police called Tonton Makut, and people started to flee. Uh, most of them settled in the southern United States. Now, mixed in with the good, hard-working people were hardened criminals. Uh, they formed the backbone of what became the Haitian gang. Now, Lincoln found out they set up in the swamps and were led by a man named Baca. Uh, you and Father James done already? We got jumped by the Haitians. It's time you level with me. Tell me what's really going on. Yes. I suppose it is. Six, sir. Uh, seven months ago, folks in the hollow started getting robbed. Money, jewelry, things of that nature. Didn't take long for us to figure out it was the Haitians. Then those batas on Velour started going after the lottery. How much money are we talking about? How much? 
Enough that we're in deep shit with Sal Marcano. Haven't kicked up to him in three months. Jesus Christ. If I deal with them, that gives us time to settle up with Marcano, right? Let me worry about Sal. He and I go way back. With this thing with the Haitians. It's time for it to end. You and Ellis need to handle it. How we gonna find them? Back in the 20s, folks used to pull salt out of the bayou. They even built themselves a little shanty town. When the depression hit, they abandoned it. That's the only place this could have come from. We're gonna need guns and ammo. Call this number. Do it away from here. No sense tipping anybody off. Or we could sweep the hollow, track down and kill every last one of those cocksuckers, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. The last thing folks in this neighborhood need to see is colored people killing each other. Do this quiet, away from here. Once we eliminate whoever's running the show, the rest of them will go down on their own. Trust me. All right, soldier boy. I'll follow your lead. Be careful, here. Yeah? Those Haitians are a hard people. Do not ever underestimate them. C'est lié que c'est diverse c'est suscite l'hostilité. You sure this is how you want to play this? Last thing they're gonna expect is an attack from the water. You head back round to the row. Stay with the car. I'll meet you over there when this is done. Hope you know what you're doing. Trust me, Ellis. Here in a bit, this will all be behind us. If we have to burn down half the hollow to get to Sammy, we're doing it. Ain't stopping till that old man is dead. Him, Alice, and the other one. Lincoln, Clint, Papa Lake, by open the gate for me. Shoot him from this side! Big mistake going after the hollow. The man you're talking about took me in when I had nowhere else to go. You are no better than you. You fucking pig! Damn you to hell! Take it easy! Take it easy! Take it easy! He kept me in there, locked in there, day and night. Beat me, use me. I kiss you, motherfucker! You and your entire goddamn family! He's dead! He's dead! He can't hurt you anymore. It's over. Over? Over! <laughs> this is never going to be over. Pajam! Fucking Haitians. I'm gonna fire my 
from his ass. Get you out of trouble, don't I? You old? I am. How'd it go with Baca? Well, we came to an understanding. He stayed dead, not let him. Let's get back to Sammy's. Can't even tell you how happy Pops is gonna be. And this shit with the Haitians has been weighing on him. With them out of the way, things will calm down. Go back to how they should be. Been telling him for months we needed to do something like this, but Pops, he... I don't know. Sometimes I think he's lost the taste for this shit. Just because a man don't rush to violence don't mean he lost something. I know, it just makes me wonder what happens after, you know? No, I don't know. Explain it to me. Don't matter if it's a bullet or the hand of God. We all go sometime, right? I suppose. But Ellis, we don't need to talk, but... I pray that Pops outlives the both of us. But if he doesn't, every motherfucker in the hollow's gonna be looking to us or gunning for us. Just saying we gotta be ready when that day comes. Yeah, well, that's not something we gotta worry about right now. So just cool it with your grand plans, all right? Yeah, all right. The thing Lankin didn't understand, or maybe want to understand, is that for a man like Sammy, there's always gonna be more Haitians. Now, if there wasn't someone going after Sammy, then there was someone else forcing him into a bad situation. It was never going in. That's how Lincoln ended up working for Sal Marcano. You were right about those Haitians being down by that old salt mine. They won't be bothering us again. It was a mistake sending you down there. I should handle my own business. This isn't any different than what I was doing before I left. You probably don't know this. But every night on the TV, right after the news, they show the names of all the boys killed over there in Vietnam. I'd be sitting in the kitchen eating my supper, watching that list scroll by, wondering if today is the day I finally see your name. But you never did. Nothing happened to me. There's only so much luck down the way. Sooner or later, pull up that bucket, there's nothing in it. So, what are we gonna do about Marcano? Damn, it's got that money one way or the other. Lottery gonna be enough to cover it? The lottery? <laughs> no. But Sal called a bit ago. Wants you to meet him up the country club. Says he's got something in the works. Square things up between us. The only black folk allowed in there to help. Now, they may not like it, but they're not gonna say no to Sal Marcano. He says you get to come in, you get to come in. Fine. I always did want to see the inside of that place. You need to do whatever Sal asks, yeah? For all our sakes. Yes, sir. What you doing up here? Help goes into the back. I'm uh, I'm here to see Mr. Marcano. The name's Lincoln Clay. That a fact? I'll be goddamned. Mind your manners while you're in there, boy, or they'll be hell to pay you here. Park over to the side.
Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Lincoln Clay, Christ, man, get a look at you. I bet those fucking gooks shit themselves when they saw you coming. Been a long time, Georgie. Oh, no shit has been a long time. I think the last time I saw you was that night over in the French ward, right before you shipped out. <laughs> Damn it, that wasn't a gas. Oh, I seem to remember me and Ellis running from the cops, uh, and Danny ending up in the drunk tank. Hell, man, I bailed him out. Besides, so just worth it to knock the hell out of them cracker assholes. <laughs> Smoke? Sure. <laughs> oh, man. Sammy said Mr. Marcano wanted to see me. Mr. Marcano? Shit. Make him sound like a goddamn lawyer. You just call him Sal. Come on, he's in the back. <laughs> I should have wore something else. Hey, these squares have a problem with Joe Threads. You can take it up with my old man. He'll tell him to kiss his ass. <laughs> nice thing about having fuck you money. Olivia, I hate to cut this short, darling, but I've got a meeting coming up. Remy, a pleasure as always, sir. Two more glasses. <laughs> Lincoln, good to see you. This is Vito Scaletta. He's the one I've been telling you about. Come on, Lincoln, sit down. So you served in Vietnam, huh? Yes, sir. Sal tells me uh, you're on a few pieces of tin over there. Well, I served with some good men. Nothing I did would have happened without them. Army? Marines? Regular army at first, and then I was recruited to the 5th SFG. Special Forces. I told you it was something else. Now, not that anything's gonna go wrong, but just in case, goddamn, don't you want a man like that on your side? Well, if you're vouching for him, Sal, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Look, I got a couple things to take care of. Thanks for the drink. Christ, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> Fucking carpetbagger. Commission sent him down here from Empire Bay about 15 years back. He's been a pain in my goddamn ass ever since. Well, I guess you're wondering what this is all about. Yeah, Sammy didn't tell me too much. Twice a year, the feds take old money out of circulation and destroy it. Over the course of the next few days, that money's gonna be delivered here to the reserve in town. And you're gonna hit one of those shipments? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. We are gonna use that occasion to gain access to their vault. And then steal everything that ain't nailed down. <laughs> Should be six, seven million in there, easy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking ballsy. <laughs> it's a chance of a goddamn lifetime is what it is. Now, Vito's fronting a lot of the money for the job, and he got us the combination to the vault. Hey, you had a chance to see Danny? No, not yet. Oh, well, you will. We brought him and his old man in on this. And they're gonna need your help, so go see them. They ain't still in that same place. There's something else we gotta talk about. Now, it's safe to assume you know about the problem Sammy's been having. I took care of the Haitians. Once things settle down, money will start coming in again. You see that right there? That's what I'm talking about. You didn't sit around with your thumb jammed in your ass. You saw a problem, you went out and took care of it. God damn, I take that over money any day of the week. We pay our own way, debts and all, always have. Oh, hell, son, I know that. I wouldn't expect otherwise. But you know, even after we all evened up, you're still gonna be slopping around in the ass end of this city. Not much of a future in that. But maybe there's a different way forward, you understand? For all of us. What'd you have in mind? I want you to know I mean no disrespect when I say this. Sammy's a hell of a man, but he's not getting any younger. And I'm thinking it's time to make a change. Well, I don't think that Ellis is ready for that kind I'm of not experience. talking about Ellis. I'm talking about you. I want you to run the holler. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, look here, if you're worried about Sammy, don't you understand? Now, he's always been on the level with me. And this job we're talking about, there's more than enough for him to retire on. He took me in when I had nowhere else to go. Treated me like a son. I'm sorry, Mr. Marcano, I, I can't do that to him. Well, shit, son. I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't just a little disappointed. But I get it. You're loyal. 
which is something that is scarce these days. Do you still want me to help with this thing we've been talking about? <laughs> you goddamn right I do! <laughs> and when it's all done, you all be more than square with me. You have my word. <laughs> what do you really want to hear? That we'd kidnap and torture anyone suspected of working with the VC? I'm trying to ascertain the level of training that Lincoln Clay received during his time in Vietnam. Someone like that you don't need to train. You point them in the right direction, you get the fuck out of their way. <coughs> Can't see a goddamn thing. <coughs> Neither can they. I said we keep looking, stay cool. Gotta we'll get through this. Let's just keep looking. <coughs> Motherfuckers. Got him! Suspects He's are right there! He's right there! Get around this asshole! Ah! I've got the shot! Ah! Stand down! I'm right here, asshole! Oh, God damn it! He's got me stuck! Fuck yeah! The drill's through! Hot damn, Alice. What took you guys so long? Piece of shit drill kept overheating. You and Lincoln both still in one piece? Yeah, we good. Where's Danny? He's pushing everything off to the side so that we have room to catch the money. All right, well, once you square the way up here, we start driving it down. we we'll make it quick. Motherfuckers killed the lights. Just worry about the money. I'll deal with this. What you doing? Christ Almighty, what the hell's happening? Here he is! Ain't those the gods claiming to be in his ass? Looking for cover! He killed another cop! You gotta box him in! to cut us down the second we make a break for it. Tell Danny he needs to get us out of here. And these bastards got us pinned down. Y'all need to figure something out. I got some TNT. I'll put on our side of the hole and detonate it. What the fuck is that gonna accomplish? With any luck, it'll blow a hole big enough for y'all to drop down. With any luck, Danny, do you even know what the fuck you're doing? Come on, it's dynamite. How complicated could it be? It's lit. Get the fuck away from the hole. No one really knows why Sal Marcano turned on Thomas Burke, uh, but he took Point Verdun from him and gave it to an enforcer named Roman the Butcher Barbieri, who promptly busted up one of Burke's legs. Now, Danny Burke was part of the heist crew. 
I mean, he was a gearhead, had never done anything like this before, but Thomas Burke insisted. He figured if the heist was a success, Sal would forgive him and return point for done. Penetrator, all right. <laughs> hey, now I heard there ain't nothing sweeter than Vietnamese pussy. You tell me it's true. <laughs> Casanova Clay. Shit, man, it's so fucking good to see you. You too, Danny. That's Nikki. God, she wanted to be here, but I ain't remember how old I was. Oh, God damn, you piece of shit. Yeah, unfortunately. Come on, let's grab a beer. Wait for the old man to chill out, and then we can get down to it. Yeah. What's up, man? Yeah, I already got it all set up and organized. All the girls gonna be there and everything, except we just gotta go in my cars, because we can't roll up in that beat-up piece of shit outside. <laughs> oh, you didn't just call my all-American machine a beater? I'm just saying, there better rides out there. Hey, bullshit there are. This car's a beast. I dropped the custom 358 in before we shipped out. That ain't the only thing you dropped in there. Maybe you should tell them about how you'd borrow it from Ellis and take the ladies <laughs> for a ride. Hell, man, leave me out of this. Did you fucking my car? Mm -hmm. Nah, ain't no big deal. I was always wrapped up tight. <laughs> Besides, I already got one fucking bass in my life. I don't need another one. All right, you know what? You're going to clean it. Not just the back oh. seat. Every square inch. <laughs> I don't need to be riding around sitting in your shit. Hey, and you, funny man, you going to fucking help. Like hell I am, shit, I didn't get any. Yeah, well, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you fucking jokers got about as much chance of pulling this off as I do at winning a goddamn decathlon. All, all right, Dad, we hear you. <laughs> Danny and Ellis, you're gonna use the drill to cut a hole up through the bottom of the vault. You and Georgie, you'll be inside. You're gonna drop the money down, then get the hell out of there. That goddamn drill ain't easy to move, though. So we need a boat, to get it through the canals and into position. Well, Ellis and I worry about the boat. See, George's old man flipped the guard at the reserve, giving you his truck. <laughs> <laughs> Between that and the uniforms, and no one gonna give us a second look. <laughs> Come on, let's get moving. We still gotta swing by Skeletta to finish up some prep work. Hey, and you two assholes, don't think this gets you off the hook when it comes to my car. Y'all best get ready to clean it. I ain't cleaning shit. Hey, you cleaning it. My father was a lot of things, few of them good. But he started out smuggling moonshine, so he knew about the canals underneath the city, and that one of them went right under the Federal Reserve. It was his idea to use a boat to move the drill into position. He was a real son of a bitch, my father. More than anyone else, I blame him for what happened. You want to stick your own neck out, fine. But leave your son out of it. It's his fault Danny died. We need to go. We all here, go, holy! These guys coming down through the hall. Fuck, more guys, we need to fuck out of here. Motherfuckers, cops cutting off our escape route. We'll find another way out of here. This tunnel has to go somewhere. Oh. I'm glad we're breathing and all, but what the hell are we gonna do now? Uh, only option is to head up. Are you kidding me? There'll be cops all over the place. Well, with any luck, they'll be too busy dealing with Mardi Gras. Uh, Notice us. Let's go. Well, damn it, this ain't a gas. Uh. Hey, you sure you need to grab that much of my ass? Oh, shut up and keep climbing, man. Come on, we got you. 
All right, once we get out there, I hit a payphone. Call soon a ride. Can you walk? Yeah, somebody give me a hand. I can get one. Uh, it's probably just gonna be easier to carry a sorry ass. Hold up. Come here. Hey, hey! Don't put me the fuck down! If anybody asks, we say he's drunk. Y'all pick up that money. Let's go. Oh, God damn it. Titties, huh, huh? Hey, darling, you looking for a good time? Danny, keep it down. No, actually, you get a look at the titties? I mean, God damn. Damn it, shut your mouth before you get us arrested. Stop, God damn it, stop! Fuck you, pig! <laughs> Hey, man, get off the phone. Right fucking now. I insist that you apologize. Y'all keep an eye out. We're in some deep shit and need your help. Where are you? Just off the parade route. Danny's hurt. I can't get a car to you because the roads are closed off. on the back side of the cemetery. Can you get over there? Yeah. There'll be a car waiting at the loading dock. And Lincoln, be careful, yeah? You and Ellie Sport. We will. Watch where you're going. Sammy's having a car delivered. It'll be at the loading dock at the grocery store. God bless the old man. Let's go. Man through the box. Tell me the party's over. I'll tell you when the goddamn party's over. An untold number of federal officers were killed today when two gunmen robbed the Federal Reserve. Fuck, you hear that? We made the news. Shut the fuck up, Georgia. We need to keep moving. I'm telling you for the last fucking time, you need to tell me what you did with the purse. A boat used in the robbery was found abandoned beneath the French Ward. All units respond. Out of the way. Oh, Fuck, they found the boat. Stay cool, man. We're still good. Uh, I already done told you. I didn't take shit from that bitch. That's not what she's saying. You get a look at her face. She's up there in the sick. There's something wrong with that boy. Lucky I don't leave your drunk ass in a ditch. No, oh, God. Don't fucking waste it. I said stop moving around. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, shit. <clears throat> what the fuck are we gonna do? Ellis. Fucking pigs are everywhere. Ellis, chill out. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, you guys take Danny and the money. Get to the car. I'll deal with the cops. I'll no. warn them off you. Hey, no fucking way, man. It's all right. He ain't going alone. We all got a friend. Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go. Hey, over here! Where's Georgie? We got separated. Before we lost sight of him, he said he'd meet us back at the house. Get in! Visual contact with suspect lost. Code 35, suspicious person in vehicle. Visual contact with suspect lost. Code 35, suspicious person in vehicle. Responding you to investigate it. All units in vicinity be advised. Suspect engaging with on-scene units. Available units. Suspect 
Titties. I don't care what it fucking costs. They gone? Yeah, yeah, man, they done. I knew we could pull it off. I knew it. We're rich. Fuck. <laughs> I'm robbing people with a six gun. I fought the law, and the law can kiss my ass. <laughs> 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 I fought the law, and the law lost. <laughs> How much is it? A little over two million dollars. <gasps> per split. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mother of God. Once everything's settled up, I'm calling the man I know, having him bring over three hookers. Boy, ain't All no right. hooker ever stepping foot in this house. You sure? Because two of them are for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be fucking in my new drifter. Well, I'd appreciate that. You know, my entire life, there's always been someone standing over me telling me, where I could go, what I could do, who I could be seen with. This. What you boys did tonight. This changes everything. This isn't just money. It's freedom. Real freedom. Ain't no one standing over me again. <laughs> over any of us. Vouloir c'est pouvoir, eh? Vouloir c'est pouvoir! Well, well, well. Oh, the man, man, look at that. Yeah, oh. And look at what I dug up. You mind pouring one more of those? Holy <laughs> shit. It'll be my pleasure. Judge, he told me ship went sideways during the robbery. Lincoln had to save your ass. You should be damn proud of that, boy. I am, Sal. More than you'll ever know. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that is some down-home hooch right there, isn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, I got a guy outside. You all mind if he comes in and packs up my cut? Hey, Not at all. Look at that. Let's see if you can handle this down-home hooch. Yeah, I'll give you some of that. Trying to get some corn whiskey? Make you a man. <laughs> they all the same. <laughs> hey, take the one on the end. It's your cut. Plus what I owe you. Even put in a little extra for your trouble. Couldn't have pulled it off without you, Sammy. You all done right by me tonight. Mwah. Mwah. Why don't you get us something off the top shelf? We need to celebrate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me twice. Yeah. Hey, fill me up. All right. You know something, Lincoln? You're possibly the baddest motherfucker I ever laid my eyes on. She shouldn't have said no. <laughs> I see a red door and I want it painted black. No colors in Where the anymore. fuck you think you're going? I want them to turn black. I see the girls walk by Stupid dressed fucking in niggas. Come on, grab that bag. Let's go. I have to turn my head up till my darkness goes. When I got the Sammy's, the whole place was burning. I still don't know what brought me there that night. Luck? Divine Providence? Or something else? When I was pulling Lincoln out of the fire, he woke up long enough to tell me to call John Donovan. So that's what I did. Most days I wish I'd never made that call. Mr. Donovan, do you know this individual? Sure. Sal Marcano. Mm -hmm. And how about this man? That's Sal's worthless piece of shit, brother Lou. Look, enough with the dog and pony bullshit. What's your real question? 
Did you help Lincoln Clay murder? So those the men you're gonna kill, huh? That's the plan, Padre. This is a dangerous course you're contemplating. And what do you think we should do? Sal Marcano deserves to die. I won't argue otherwise. Kill him. But let that be the end of it. That's not enough! It's enough if you say it's enough. I know what Sal did to you, Lincoln, but nothing you do will bring any of them back. This isn't about bringing them back or even exacting some street justice. It's about making that bastard feel what it's like to lose everything. Watch as I take it all away from him. one-way road, Lincoln. And once you start down it, there ain't no turning back. I'm going to Sammy's to get my stuff. You ready? I'll be waiting in the car. <sighs> Taught us kids to turn the other cheek. Not fight back. Problem is, that don't work. Not in the real world. When rain drops fall in you. Padre doesn't seem too keen on the plan. You don't need to worry about him. I just hate to encounter any of that Catholic guilt I'm always hearing about. He knows every low-life thing I've ever done and has never ratted me out. If I say we can trust him, we can trust him. Fair enough. So you mind telling me what we're really doing? We're gonna kill Marcano and all the assholes who work for him. Bullshit. If that's all you're after, you'd grab an XM-21, smear on some face paint, and they'd all be dead before dinner. And you sure as hell wouldn't need a tack up center and all this other shit you've asked me for. After I got back, Marcano offered me the Harlem, said it was time for Sammy to retire. I told him no. So you think what happened is your fault? Hard to see it otherwise. What do you think Sal was going to do? Host a little party for Sammy? Maybe give him a gold watch and a plaque congratulating him on his retirement? We both know there's only one way out of the life. And you still haven't answered my question. I'm gonna take over the city, district by district. Marcano wanted me to run the Harlem? Fuck him. By the time I'm done, I'll be running the whole goddamn city. <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Assuming, of course, you're up for something that's strenuous. How the fuck wouldn't I be? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you got shot in the face? I might have lost a step or two, but it'll come back to me. Always does. God, if that isn't the fucking truth. One other thing. Probably not much of a surprise, but most of the cops in this town are in Sal's pocket. Yeah, gonna always assume that. Just being diligent. The cops see you fighting Sal's goons. They're coming after you, every time. You sure you don't need a ride? Nah, man, I'm good. I'll be at the motel.
Come see me when you're ready. Gotta do. I ever tell you how I got this? Sure, you stole it. That idea here. Yeah. Let the pocket of this old white man who used to come around here raising here. Take this with you. It's always brought me good luck. I can't do that. I know you think you're alone in this world, Lincoln. But you're not. And you never will be. <laughs> you weren't lying about setting up a tax center. The key to running a successful black bag operation is plausible deniability. Which is why I stole all this shit from the FBI. <laughs> Things go tits up, those chicken dicks can deal with the fallout. Glad to see you haven't lost your touch. <laughs> if there's one thing I'm good at, it's fucking with Hoover's Ferry Brigade. And while you were convalescing, I did some digging around. Wanted to see if there are any local assets for you to recruit. I came up with three possibilities. Right now, my priority is getting the hollow out from whoever ended up with it. Figured as much. Haitians? Well, I thought they fell apart after I put Baca down. Lucky for us, they're back up. And they're none too pleased that Sal gave Delray hollow to the Dixie Mafia. Dixie Mafia? Georgie's idea. He's got him running heroin, trying to get everybody hooked. Motherfucker. I'll be damned if I let those coon asses destroy everything that Sammy built up. Who replaced Baca? Unknown. He managed to keep his identity a secret. Unknown? Even to John Donovan? Never thought I'd see the day. Well, I can't help it if I was born pigmentally challenged. So, you telling me my only option is to tail one of these Haitians? Hope he leads me back to the mysterious leader? Hey, it's better than no options. And once you've ingratiated yourself with them, you come see me. I'm finishing something up you're gonna want to see. flying James L. Ray back this week. Still amazes me they expect us to believe it was one man who did in Dr. King. It's too easy. Too bad. Let's say he was the one who shot Dr. King. Just him and no one else. What if it's really that easy to strike down a great man like Dr. King, President Kennedy, Brother Malcolm? Then nothing in this country will ever change. Now you struggle and you sweat and someone can take it all away just like that. Huh? Huh? Hey there, 
brown sugar. You sure looking sweet. Today. <laughs> How'd it go out there? Those Dixie cocksuckers <laughs> when they shit like clockwork. And we about to take them apart piece by fucking piece. If that don't work, we just take a sledgehammer to the whole goddamn thing. For true. The thing that surprises me the most is how much this... You're not allowed back here. You can't fool me! I see you! I looked everywhere. Nothing. We all want Dixie out of the hollow. Give me your boss and I'll make it happen. Fuck. Shit. Get to the voodoo shop. You'll find the boss there. Sorry about the headache, brother. you pulled back at the Haitian camp. Ten Baca was holding you prisoner. And I yelled, you are dead. It appears we both full of surprises. Certainly does. <laughs> what can I do for you, Lincoln Clay? I want you to help me kill Sal Marcano. I see. A few months ago, you was trying to kill me. Now you break in here and expect me to trust you? Now that Marcano's back in the Dixie Mafia, it's only a matter of time till they come for you. And when they do, they'll kill everyone standing in their way. Lest I hitch my horse to your wagon, so to speak. I'll see to it that you get the hollow. After that, depends on how things shake out. Do you know why Sammy and I were at war? On account of you going after the lottery? Please. Just because you don't want to face some uncomfortable truths ain't a reason to act naive. Sammy and I were fighting because the people in Dahala deserve better than a two-faced old man who handed out cans of food whenever the mood hit him. Who always did what Sal Marcana told him to do, even if it pitted him against his own people. He did the best he could. And yet his best didn't amount to much, did it? Once I have to holler, I run it as I see fit. No questions asked. As long as you give me access to your muscle, your connections, and a place to hold up from time to time, you can do what you want. Marcana replaced Sammy with a man named Richie Doucette. Do you know of him? Assume he's Dixie Mafia. He's a wooster! Likes to kidnap black teenagers and take them out to the bayou. After starving them for a few days, he cuts them loose, tells them to run. Sometimes he brings out the dogs, you know, for old time's sake. That's... That's how he killed my sister. This is all I have left. How do I find him? It's still dangerous around here for him, so he stays on the move. But his men operate out of the community church in the old theater, Pearl, as it used to be called. It was named after Sammy's wife. I'm taking it down first. One of my men have been staking it out. Seeing what he can learn about how it's being run, you should talk to him and see what he knows. Once I deal with it, I'll see about the church. Lincoln, you a sight for so eyes. Laveau. Been a while. Wasn't expecting to see you working with the Haitians. It's either this or bow down to them fucking coon asses. And you know I ain't ever been one to bow down to anyone. <laughs> ain't that the goddamn truth? Cassandra phoned ahead. 
Say you going out to Furnace. Asshole named Merle Jackson runs it. Turned it into a brothel. That's white fellas come in and do whatever they want to our young sisters. How do I get to him? You don't. Not yet, anyway. A lot of those Dixie fucks try to stay out of sight. There's someone put a bullet up their ass. If I hit his operations, he'll have to come out and deal with me. I got an idea how to get his attention. He got some girls locked up on the second floor of Perlis. Calls him his thoroughbreds. Has them strung out on all kind of shit. He makes a lot of money off them. Go in there quiet. Get them out of there. I'll let you know when it's done. Hey, uh, I'm sorry to hear about Sammy Nettis. They always did right by me. You're out of here. Go see Cassandra at the pierced heart. She'll help you. should go to the pierced heart. Thank, thank you. Kill all of them. Every last one. Get out of here. Now. stays hid forever. Time to shit or get off All units, search is called off. He Repeat, abandon so search. Eyes. Return to patrols. I freed those women. God damn if that place in the hell hole. Paint you to see what those redneck fucks are doing, doesn't it? Soon as I get my hands on Jackson, that all comes to an end. Merle's got pimps scattered around the hollow. Is leaning on them to make up for what he's lost. Kill them, and he'll show up at the club. All right. When you're dealt with them, come back. I'll be able to confirm that Merle's over at the club. He killed one of our brothers. Run! Please. Where's the air? No. Taking the shot. Hold up over at Perlis. What I hear, he's pissed as all hell. <laughs> Wish I could see that asshole's face right about now. Just so we're on the same page. Once I'm in there, I'm killing any motherfucker who gets in my way. Ain't no one shedding tears for those pricks. You do what you think's best. I'll be seeing you, Laveau. Oh, no! 
how a goddamn nigger just strolled on through here without a care in the world. Do it! I promise I won't do it. Got me pinned! Well, what you gonna do, nigger? This. Dixie motherfuckers are out of pearlers. Have your men come lock it down. Good. I'll send some men over to see to the place. Run those Dixie motherfuckers out of the church, and Richie will have to respond. In uh, 1966, the FBI recruited me out of college. Uh, Chicago was my first assignment, but I was transferred down south in 68. I stayed there until 86, uh, when I was promoted to uh, assistant director of the Criminal Enterprise Branch. I stayed with the Bureau until my retirement in 1999. There are so many stories about Cassandra. Um, as a girl, she was kidnapped, killed, and brought back to life by a voodoo priest. She watched swamp rats rape and murder her sister. She shot her own father and dumped his body in the swamps. It's impossible to know what's true. Surprised to see you out here. <laughs> Decided to get some fresh air. That heroin the Dixie Mafia's been selling? It's run out of there by a man named Charlie Kincaid. Meaning all the other dealers around here kick up to him. Charlie stays away if he can help it, so you're gonna have to put the squeeze on him. I flagged a couple of his guys. You get them to talk, they'll tell you how to get to him. Now, from what I hear, Charlie's only in this for the money. He's not a true believer like those other Dixie Mafia assholes. So maybe if I talk sweet to him, he'll decide to bail on set and come work for me. Assuming I can draw him out. I got something I can help you with that. That's what I wanted to show you. New Bordeaux is on a standard communication grid, so getting a system of wiretaps up and running should be fairly easy. Just install this little beauty on a junction box, and I'll be able to construct an intelligence map of the nearby area. How many more of these you got? Just those. The parts are on an agency watch list. But if you manage to dig up more of them, we could wiretap the entire city. All right. God damn it! People think living under these commie motherfuckers is so great they should move their asses over to Moscow. You find more of these, you bring them to me. You are way too sensitive about that shit, man. Oh, fuck those motherfuckers. Fucking traitors. I'll see you when it's time to move against Charlie. Get it, cocksucker. in on old Charlie, and he isn't such a bad fellow. He's more of a kinder, gentler redneck, and as luck would have it, his wife is expected. Man in that situation usually doesn't care who he works for, as long as he's still above ground. <laughs> Poor sap starts blubbering when the two of them talk about names. Right now, it's between Bocephus and Thomas Lee. 
Anyway, his guys have the church locked down, and all of them are more of the shoot first, let God sort them out variety of redneck. You get your hands on Charlie, though. He'll do what he's told without putting up much of a fuss. All your intel's been updated. You going back to the motel? After I get something to eat, I'll see you when you're done dealing with these inbred assholes. You trespass! Reggie, I didn't want to do this shit. Rest in peace, asshole. Send your men to the First Baptist Church. Those Dixie heathens have been handled. your name for the record? Donovan. John. Mr. Donovan, you understand that by appearing before this committee, you have explicitly waived your constitutional rights in regards to counsel and self-incrimination. Sure. And you further acknowledge that by appearing before this committee, you agree to disclose all information pertaining to the events that occurred in New Bordeaux during the summer and fall of 1968. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't. You were an operative in the Central Intelligence Agency from 1953 to 1969, is that correct? That's right. When did you arrive in Vietnam? August of 1961. Please describe for this committee the actions you took during your time in Vietnam. I spent a couple months in Saigon, then I was transferred to a base in Laos that was operated by the Special Activities Division. We trained and equipped the Hmong and then turned them loose on the NVA. We're running arms and supplies via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And you worked with Lincoln Clay in what eventually became the Phoenix Program. Within a year or so, Lincoln was heading up his own PRU. We'd cross over into Vietnam and locate enemy targets and either kill them or bring them back for interrogation. <laughs> Just thinking about it? Jesus Christ. You wouldn't believe the shit we did to those cocksuckers. This man's name is Jesse. We were just having ourselves a little conversation about Richie Doucet. Listen, I ain't done nothing, you hear? I don't know anything. I, I was just taking a walk and walking down the street and, and she just grabbed me, is all. You a Dixie Mafia? No, yes, I mean, shit. 
I did it for the money, you hear? I, I ain't got nothing personal against y'all. I don't even carry a gun. Where's Doucette? He's... He's out at the abandoned amusement park to the west of here. Banned Saturdays? What the hell is he doing out there? From what I heard, it's because you've been tearing things up. And Georgie, Georgie's on a goddamn warpath. He wants Richie dead. So Richie, he grabbed what was left of the heroin and took off. Said he was gonna lay low until he could settle things with Georgie. How many men he got with him? Hell, I don't know. All of them. Hand me that knife. No, no, please. No, I ain't done nothing to y'all. No, please, I, I'm begging you. My mama, my papa. Go on, get. He could want to set. He ain't no threat to nobody. Let him run back home to his mama. If you wrong, there'll be hell to pay. I got a bad sense about this man. Richie needs to work his shit out with Joe. Huh? You know, we can work something. Ah, got up. Welcome to Baron Saturday's Fun Park. We're sure happy to have you with us today. So put your troubles aside and enjoy yourself. You never know what that dirty old Baron's got waiting for you round the corner. Look someplace else. Gonna find a hole. Come at him from the other side. Second to ensure a safe ride, keep so you your hands your on ass out the legs inside the side. casket at all times. Fine. And keep an eye on them kitties now, you hear? <laughs> and you're the ride, y'all! Oh, I'm not here to steal your heroin, Richie. I'm here to make you pay for what you did to Sammy and Ellis Robinson. I didn't have nothing to do with that! I watched you stab Ellis in the gut. I couldn't do nothing about it then, but I sure as hell can now. Oh, 
God damn it. None of that was my idea, you hear? It was all Georgie, him and his old man. They wanted y'all gone, not me. Uh, what was I supposed to do, say no? Either that or make sure that I was dead. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> No, please, please, listen, listen, just decent thing would be to let a man get in a prayer before you kill him. You can pray on the way up. When I saw Richie Doucette hanging from that Ferris wheel, I felt a profound sense of disbelief. Nothing like this had ever happened before. The mobsters killed each other all the time, but it was generally a small, contained event. Some greaseball is eating spaghetti and meatballs at his favorite restaurant and gets popped in the head. But this was different. Even then, even before I knew who killed him, I knew that Richie had been put on display. Lincoln was trained in psychological warfare by the CIA. He wanted to terrify the mob, wanted them to know he was going to kill every last one of them and that none of them would be able to stop him. Doucette's dead. The hollow's yours. They say you strung him up on the old Ferris wheel. He killed Ellis. Shit all over the people in this neighborhood. Doucette got what he deserved. Mm, the righteous will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. Mm. That goes both ways, you know. I thought you said all that was behind us. My men are struggling with the notion that we now have to answer to the same men who killed Baca. We wiped out half our number. If I was them, I'd get over it. We don't have time to go around coddling people. Mm, of course not. But just just carry weight. And if you were to help my man Emmanuel, that's a gesture that would go a long way in calming nerves. What's he need? He oversees my reefer operation over at the boathouse. Help him, and I'll see to it you get a potion of the profits. Just so we're clear, I'm expecting a cut of everything, not just what comes from selling weed. It's gonna cost a lot of money to take down Marcano. Don't worry. I'll make sure you get your money. Come on. Problems? This goddamn thing keeps jamming up. If you're ready to see the other briefings, we can get started. Show me what else you managed to dig up. You got it. Two of the city's finest scumbags. Oh, watch yourself around my files. There's a system. <laughs> oh, yes. Point for Dunn's favorite son, Thomas Burke. How's he doing since Danny? <laughs> Nine weeks ago, Burke stumbles into Roman the Butcher Barbieri's deli, drunk off his ass, waving a gun around. He fires off ten rounds, but the only thing he manages to hit is a fucking ham hock in the goddamn deli case. The Butcher's boys slap the shit out of him and toss him in a dumpster. Barbieri's the one who took over Point Verdun, right? Busted up Burke's leg with a tie iron. That's why Burke was willing to go along with the robbery. He thought he'd make things square with Sal, and he'd be able to get Point Verdun back. He always struck me as an asshole. Yeah just like every other Irishman. But he hates Marcano as much as you do. Yeah, all right. Least I can do is give Danny's old man a chance for a little payback. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> He's been spending his time in a dive bar up in Point for Dunn. Duffy's, it's called. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Yo, you better be worth all this trouble. Burke. Been a while. Lincoln Clay. He's just crazy on the cross. Man, I've seen everything. I heard you were dead. Been hearing that a lot. What the fuck do you want? Came here to make you a business proposition. Is that so? I'm going after Marcano, his brothers, anyone else that's associated with him. 
Yeah, what well, may help? The way I see it, once we deal with Barbieri, you get Point Verdun back. After that, we can discuss what happens to the rest of the city. Hey, no, fuck off. You got all your chalky postures once already. Look where I caught me. From where I'm standing, I'm not seeing much of a difference between then and now. You lesson that, you lesson God, you fuck. <laughs> Danny was so buttoned up, the coroner wouldn't let me get a last look at him. Anyone's killing that fucking Marcano. That's me. Unless Marcano's hanging around one of these dive bars, I don't think he has too much to worry about. Yeah, go fuck yourself. There's more stones in the likes of you, Lara fucking off. A fucking ingrate. Coming to your question, me. You and your kind, you are caught and run at the first sign of trouble. You always have, you always will. Sit your ass back down, we going for a ride. What a Christ you think you're doing? You were bragging about your stones, so I figured we'd take a little ride. See who cracks first, the Chalky or the Mick. Grace, you're gonna make the piss come out of me, Japs, eh? Pick the wrong man to call out. <laughs> all right, all right. You proved your point, your mango saw. Pull over here. Now, get the fuck out of my raid. Give me time to sober up, then come see me. I think we can work something out. Back so soon, then. Tell me about Barbieri. Barbieri? Well, he's a right fucking cunt. I can tell you that much. You know what I'm asking, Burke. Give me something I can use. Barbieri's running splow out of the Sweetwater Distillery. Splow. Panther's piss. White mule. Alley gin. Pot chain, moonshine, you ignorant fuck. Christ, what kind of booze you people drink over there in Darkyville? Kind is not called painter's piss. <laughs> Boy, you ain't lived. Set the whole thing up myself. Then that gunny fuck comes in and takes it from me. Smashes me knee all to hell. Barbara Harry's gonna suffer. You hear? Days. Slow. What else has he got besides the distillery? I runs that old Robert O. Slaughterhouse. He's doing more in there than cutting a lean ribe. Drags in there. That's the end there. I'll do the heavy lifting on this, Burke. Uh -huh. Once Barbieri's dead, I'm counting on you to step up. Oh, I'll do more than step up. I'll either be running this whole damn town or burning it to the ground. But honest, doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me either way. <laughs> and yes, you know it once again. A nation once again. And the Ireland long, a province be a nation once again. Surprised to see you, Nikki. I know what you're planning on doing. And I couldn't just sit here and watch my old man send you out half-cocked. Fuck. Man, your dad's never been much for details. Yeah, what he didn't tell you is that the man running the Sweetwater Distillery is named Carl Bevers. Hard ass Country asshole. His family runs the shine through the business, sells it to local shops. Bevers ever let on to where he keeps his stills? Ah, uh, he's got brains enough to move things around. Rumor is, he's got a map hid somewhere for his drivers. Hmm. Something like that could come in handy. Maybe I'll convince one of his men to tell me where it is. Hey, we've got another man. Goes by the name of Bear. Keeping an eye on the meatpacking plant. You should go see him. I'll do that. Thanks for the help. Anytime, Lincoln. You want to know what Bevis is up to, you're gonna have to get at some of his people.
Sometimes this city goes crazy, but it always settles down. Huh? She can't hold that will on what's You got Carl's attention. He's back at the Sweetwater Distillery. Any idea how he'll react when I go in there? He's bug shit crazy swamp people. How do you think he'll react? Still, might be worth keeping him around. No one knows the bayou like he does. Oh, you one for this, Nikki? Damn right you do. Bevis is waiting for you. Real interested to see how you handle him. All right, you've got the map. Now get out there and find those stills. Would you just move on? <laughs> You talk too much. <laughs> Emptied out the distillery. It's primed and ready for your boys. Over still standing. My boys are on the way. Snatch that slaughterhouse from him, and that fuck Barbieri will have to react. Thomas Burke came to the States as a boy uh, when his father fled Ireland, likely because of his involvement in the Irish Civil War. Um, after his father died of a heart attack, uh, Burke started running booze to support himself. I mean, he turned bootlegging into an entire industry, and Sal Marcano took notice. Uh, Burke worked his way up the ranks, but could never be made because he wasn't Italian. Greetings and salutations, and all that shit. You bear? Nikki sent me. Oh, I'm gonna marry that girl someday. Bear Donnelly. I own Nikki's da. Everything. He has me keeping an eye on the Robert O. Meatpacking plant. Who's running things over there? Not job by the name of Sonny Blue. Let's a room out to the Butcher's Loan Sharks. Protection guys, too. If they can't do it there, they put the hurt to people in the street. Any chance Sonny's around the robo -dough? Fuck no. Sonny only comes around to scare his people in the shape. But I'm hearing one of his boys, a fella named Ralph, got caught skimming. They're working the bloody bastard over in the slaughterhouse to find out where he's got it stashed. Might be beneficial to pull his arse out of the fire. I'll see what I can get out of Sonny's goons. Watch your ass, Bear. Sonny Blue's people are scared of him. Might not talk. Why not make him more scared of you?
Sonny's back over at the Robert O. His language has taken an especially colorful turn of late. I take it the butcher didn't appreciate Sonny's loan sharking and protection rackets being disrupted. You got that right. And the Shinola has hit the fan. Sonny's set on getting things back to normal. You know, keeping his people more scared of him than you. We'll see about that. Keep your head down till this is over, here. Yeah? I hear Sonny's a bit pissed at some mysterious colored fella disrupting his business. Even went all the way down to the meatpacking plant to wait for him. Fucking swamp cracker fucked it up for all of us. All of us? You're the one trying to get at that holler pussy. Damn, happy girl come see you. The way Donna tells it, they find out you're fucking black only. The Haitian boys will come for you. Well, there you go. Stop trying to fuck black girls. Only a matter of time before your wife finds out. You remember her, right? Should have never fucked with Irish Point. Slaughterhouse is clear. Send your people. Hey, don't worry about the bodies. My boys will know what to do about them. Everything's in place. The butcher's on his way. Time to put that rabbit dog down. Company C of the 614 tank destroyer battalion during World War II. I trained as a medic, but I still carried a gun. Every man in our company was black. Army didn't know what to do with us other than they didn't want us fighting with the white men. Klimbach. Klimbach was that little. French town up there near the border with Germany, and we were ordered to take it. Now, the crowds took out three of the four anti-tank guns we had, but there was no way in hell we were letting them get the better of us. We were determined to show we was just as good, if not better, than every other soldier in the service. I, I don't like talking about medals I got over there. Only way a man survives something like that is through the grace of God. Doesn't seem right celebrating a little piece of tin. No one knows I helped Lincoln except for you and John Donovan. Not that I'm keeping it a secret, mind you. Just that nobody ever came around and asked about it. What's this all about? Getting ready for some company. Barbieri should be here any minute now. Barbieri's coming here. So he claims. Never known the man to be a liar. I <laughs> just got off the phone with him. I told him if he wanted to settle up, he'd be here waiting. 
For fuck's sake, Burke, you don't ever tell your enemy when and where you're gonna set up ah, the ambush. Christ, you're much too serious about all this. <laughs> it takes the fun out of it. Besides, that's the worst that could happen. You could get us all killed. Aye, that I could. It's all right. It's just Nicky. Butcher and his boys are right behind me. You sure? If there's one benefit to being your miserable daughter, it's not know what a posse of Dago assholes out for blood looks like. I'll call them out with a spotlight on the water tower. I loaded up some barrels with a special petrol mixer cooked up. I scatter them across the yard. A bullet will take them out. So don't be close to them when they blow. I'm gonna snipe those guinea fucks from the crane. You should head up to the roof. One last thing. You try to cut and run, I'll plant you myself. We clear? I'll see you when this is done. You might. You're all right back there, lass. What's that? My da asking how I'm doing? Whatever have I done to warrant such fucking concern? Ah, oh, shite girl. A simple yes or no would have been fine. On the left! On the left! Who fucks about Burke's little pet nigglet? I want the mick alive. Got it? I'm gonna give him an ass fucking. He's never gonna fucking forget. Bring him back fucking alive, that cocksucker. Running for cover. Dead asshole, 12 o'clock. Irish from the point, now. Eh? Negrin and Mick working together. Fuck me. I never thought I'd live to see the day. What can I say? Brave new world. Still alive then. I see the legs still giving you fits, huh, fucko? Ah, oh, fuck you. You won't be so cocky once I take the acetylene to you. Fuck you! What do you think happens next, huh? You're gonna die, motherfucker. You're gonna hold next to me. You, your whole organization. You're gonna suck my dick in hell. Grab his legs. Time to get him into the garage. Fat cunt. We were never able to reconstruct precisely what happened to Barbieri, primarily because his body wasn't found until the mid-1980s. The Army Corps of Engineers was dredging the bottom of the Mississippi River, and his remains were found in the trunk of an old car. Both legs were broken so many times, there was barely any bone left. They'll not leave thee, thy lone one, to pine on the stem.
since the lonely are sleeping. Go sleep there with him. You already finished with Barbieri. Barbieri? No. By a long shot. Already told you. Day slow. As for you, you show up like Lazarus himself. Name thing in a May self. This chalky bastard is either one of the luckiest sons of bitches that's ever lived, or the kind of man that invades rotten, damn luck. So goddamn sure it was the latter. <laughs> I have to admit, I was wrong about you. You can thank me by calling me by my name. Die. Lincoln it is, then. It was funny. Things get taken from us. We convince ourselves we have to go out and inflict the pain on someone else. A little man what's busted up inside of us. But it doesn't, does it? No. It does. Spent my entire goddamn life scratching and clawing at anyone who came along. Even if they were there to help. <laughs> the world fucking got me. It's the sense of changing. Only way is forward. Now that Irish Point is back under your control, I'm gonna need you to bring in as much money as you can. Uh, Going after Marcano ain't gonna be cheap. Uh, I imagine you'll be wanting your cut of the proceeds. That's right. <laughs> Can't say I'm a fan of someone looming over me. But it deals it. I asked Nikki to manage those moonshine runs, but she can't bring them all on her own. That liquor hauls in a fair amount. We'll talk to her. She's around here somewhere if she ain't out quail hunting. Quail ain't in season. Oh, for her kind, it's always in season. <sighs> yeah. Oh, You'll excuse me. Oh, I have to go to see Mr. Barbieri. He's probably getting a little lonely. <laughs> lonely. I can't believe what I'm reading, what I'm hearing on the radio. What you doing? You knew how it was gonna go down. I sat right there and told you. Maybe I'm just realizing there's a difference between hearing about something in the abstract and seeing it splash across the front page in a newspaper. You didn't think I'd go through with it? I... I don't... No, I knew. I knew as soon as you regained consciousness, I could see it. I, I look at you, I see who you were. A little boy who didn't have much but who also wasn't angry about it. A little boy who shared, who laughed, who, who just enjoyed being. I wonder what happened to him. He finally realized how things work. <laughs> Is that so? How many times was the orphanage vandalized by rednecks? How many times did we have to drive around asking restaurants for their leftovers because we didn't have nothing else to eat? Did we have to deal with racist assholes? Sure. But whenever they did something, folks come around and help us. 
white, black, Baptist, Lutheran, you name it. You know how all you boys got new jackets on Christmas? Those came from an old white woman, a Calvinist. She spent the entire year making them. If all you ever look for is evil, it's all you ever gonna see. I gotta go. I, I never wanted this for you, Lincoln. I wanted you to have a good life. This Donovan character, you trust him, and I know that both of you have been through a lot, but I don't care for him. His eyes, they are not right. Who we shooting? Didn't you hear? We're about to find ourselves in the middle of a race war. I've seen you shoot. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> hey, with this fucking rifle, I'm Wild Bill Hickok. So, how's the Padre handling all this? You know, the bloody path of mayhem and revenge you've embarked upon? Still not happy about it. Thinks you're most likely the devil. <laughs> you know, I had a look at his service record. Oh, settle down. I was just curious. He was a medic, but he saw action at Klimbaugh with the 614th. He was credited with taking out two crowd tanks on top of the 16 men he shot. A lot of killing for a would-be priest. That was different. It was during a war. And this isn't? Look, I'm just saying, we didn't win that war by worrying about hurting someone's feelings. We won it by bombing the crowds and nips back to the Stone Age. Padre'd be wise to remember that. Yeah, maybe. I'll catch you later. You're not still sore about me looking into the Padre, are you? Don't tell me you weren't at least a little curious. I guess you were able to keep Burke sober long enough to get him on our side? The man himself, Mr. Vito Scaletta. You gotta be shitting me. Last couple months have been pretty tough on old Vito. Sal's always hated him. Thought he was a mole for the commission, but he couldn't do anything about it because Vito's made. After the heist, Sal refused to pay Vito his cut, and then he put the clamps on him. He's been trying to limit Vito's ability to pay what's owed. And if Scaletta can't kick up, the commission will give Marcano permission to whack him. The only reason that Vito is still above ground is because he has a couple off-the-record businesses. He's been using that money to pay Sal. Gotta give Scaletta credit. Pretty goddamn tenacious. He's lasted a lot longer than I thought he would, but the clock is ticking. A couple weeks ago, Sal sent in his nephew, a kid named Michael Greco, to help Vito run River Row. Greco's been using his guys to limit what Vito can do, where he can go. Once he has Vito completely boxed in, he'll make his move. Scaletta has to know what Greco has planned. I'll pay him a visit. See if I can't leverage this thing with Greco to bring Scaletta around in my way of thinking. I'm sure I'll appreciate your concern. Any word about how it's going in there? How you think? Vito's taking his beating. Wish Greco would just let us kill a poor son of a bitch. Get it over with. Nah, Greco wants to show how tough. Got him! Looks like I got here just in time, Vito. Lincoln. How's this possible? I thought you were dead. Bullet was deflected by my skull. Came out the back. Talk about some goddamn luck. Worst place to shoot a fella's in the forehead. Skull's harder than you think. <clears throat> Come on. We need to have a talk. When I heard about what happened, I went to Marcano asking my cut right then and there. I figured if he fucked you and Sammy, I'd be next. 
I'm guessing he didn't go for it. <sighs> Said he wanted to wait for the heat to die down. Didn't want me running around, buying expensive shit, getting noticed. Like I'm some fucking amateur never sat on a big score before. The money I fronted for the robbery was pretty much everything I put away. Didn't have enough to run, so... I stayed. The commission wouldn't let him just kill me, so I figured I'd make that cocksucker jump through every hoop. Make him prove I deserve to get whacked. It wasn't much, but it was something. Heard he brought in his nephew to push you out. A kid named Michael Greco. Nephew by marriage, not blood. Sure didn't number in here. Yeah. They were looking to see what other rackets I was running. I could leave a fucking paper trail in my office. Eh, don't bother with that shit. Look, uh... Appreciate you getting me out of the freezer and all, but, uh... What are you doing here? Marcano deserves to pay for what he did, so I'm going after him. Him, his brothers, his lieutenants, all of them. And I'm gonna need your help. Look, it's pretty much whittled me down to nothing. I mean, this is it. For now, maybe. But once I take back River Road from Greco, money will start coming in, it'll be a different story. Also, we're partners now. As long as you do what I say and give me what I want when I want it. <laughs> so goodbye, Marcano, hello, Lincoln Clay. It's either that or more of this. Next time, I won't be around to fish your ass out the freezer. Nobody kills that scumbag but me. You bring me Greco. I'm in. Tell me about his rackets. He took over the dock union, and he's got a warehouse. He has a lot of valuable shit in there. You take both of them out. Greco's finished. A couple of my guys have been keeping tabs on him. You should talk to them. They'll fill you in. All right. Vito sent me. You're Connie, right? Yup. Connie DeMarco. Been keeping an eye on the smuggling business for Vito. Roy Thibodeau's in charge now, and it's a damn shit show. Why hasn't Greco bounced him yet? Oh, he bounced Roy right into a hole if he got to say so. Greco didn't pick Roy, and that puts a target on his back. Still, Roy's trying to sell the usual shit from out of Cuba. Cigars and rum, mostly. Hell, rumor has it they even selling medicine and shit to the Cubans. Sounds like Greco scrambling. <laughs> Imagine Greco thought his uncle Sal would give him a break, but no. So he's squeezing everyone, including Roy. Business gets any worse, Roy's gonna have to come down and see to it himself. Mind, Roy's got a few guys here and there. Might take some persuading, but I'll get him to talk. You get hold of any Roy's guys yet? They're sure to talk if you, uh, ask just right. Anybody follow you? Roy is rattled, scared of Greco, terrified of you. <laughs> Heard he started sleeping at the warehouse, the only place he feels safe. Good. Means I have an easier time getting my hands on him. Once he's taken care of, we'll move in. Vito will turn things around. You'll see. That poor fucker Roy is back at the warehouse. Do what you gotta do. Huh? Oh, shit. Exactly ignore that. Grabbing some cover! They're gonna have to carry you ah, A box! I can make things good again for you, Roy. Join my crew. Great. That sounds great. Whatever you say. 
See? Things are already looking up. Need you guys to secure the smuggling operation at the warehouse. Nice work. Those Fanooks never should have fucked with me. I'll send some of my crew. You take the Doc Union back, and then fuck Greco will be done. Today, I'm sure the file on Vito Skelet is about three feet thick, but that wasn't always the case. Hoover didn't even acknowledge the Mafia existed until 1957, so we weren't really keeping tabs on guys like Vittorio Scaletta till after that. Now, we know he served in World War II and did a six-year stint in prison for theft and illegal distribution of federal rations. It's, uh, it's generally believed he was a made member of the Falcone family in Empire Bay, though he's also a suspect in the death of Don Carlo Falcone. Now, if he did kill the Don, Vito must have had friends in high places because he was allowed to live. He was exiled, though, and forced to relocate down here, and the Commission convinced Sal Marcano to make Vito a lieutenant and give him some rackets. Vito said you'd be expecting me. Took you long enough. I'm Jock Blanchard. Vito claims you can unfug this mess and get us working men back on a job. Maybe. Depends if your information's any good. Used to kick up to Vito's men Andy Toretto for union work. But now that Coyon Greco got Andy squeezing everybody for more dues. You don't pay, you don't get a work permit. Poor fucks even gotta use Greco's loudmouth buddies to collect. This Greco sounds like a real piece of shit. <laughs> You don't know the half of it. On top of that, Andy's got to keep the permits under lock and key. Anything happens to those, oof. Ain't no work happening around here. I'll see what I can get out of Toretto's people. Toretto runs a tight ship, but you should be able to get some of his guys talking. As good a job as you've done slowing work at the dock union, I'm surprised Toretto's not out in the street and hunting you himself. Word is, Andy Toretto's down at the dock union, demanding to know who's been stopping his people from collecting dues. Think he tipped off Greco to what's been happening? Nah. Knowing Andy, he'd probably see Greco in the ground next to you if he could. But he's a lifer, and if he's got a job to do, he's gonna goddamn well do it. Bad fucking situation all around. And it's about to get worse. Tell the boys they'll be back to work soon, Jock. You pissed Toretto off just enough that he's back at the dock union. You're gonna have to deal with him. You can't hide from me. Shit's closed. Beat it. Get behind him! Get you now, dipshit! I'm the one you want, motherfucker! Shit, you shit! Either you kill me, or that piss and Greco does. Well, since Greco ain't here... The dock union's under control. Put some of you guys on it. I'll send them over. And Lincoln, just cause Greco's a dipshit doesn't mean he's a pushover. He'll probably send out some of his men, have him try and take you out. So watch your ass. Get your hands on Greco and rough him up all you want. But don't kill him. That's for me.
how did Lincoln Clay convince Thomas Burke, Vito Scaletta, and the woman known as Cassandra to work together? He called a sit-down. He told them to meet him at an old plantation house in the bayou. When he had them all in the same room, he laid out how they were going to take down Marcano. Lincoln could be very persuasive. Greco's in that building at the end of the block. A lot of whoas in there. Probably face down a pussy right now. You got any muscle with him? Yeah, a couple of meatheads. I'll go around the front, you take the back. He tries to run, grab his ass. Nobody kills that prick but me. Fuck. Those are Marcano's guys. God, suck. Come on, back to the car, you drive. I'll cover us. Fuck if that little prick gets away. Greco end up with my car. He's a little fuck, that's how. God damn it. Why don't you just let Marcano handle this jackass? Marcano would just kill a little shit stain. I want to take my time. Besides, until I can get at Marcano directly, this is the next best goddamn thing. Point taken. That dipshit, get away! What's up, though, with Greco? You cocksuckers are next! You fuckers missed me! Cops are closing in. Hey, get the door. Yeah. Come on. Available unit. Suspicious individual in vehicle. Officer. Oh, it's not one thing. The fucking cops are on our ass. What? What happened? You crossed the wrong motherfucker. That's what happened. Now shut the fuck up. Back there, kiddo. Ride will be over soon. Attention all units. Suspect Cops are still on us. Lose them, Lincoln. You fuckers ignoring me? Back to your place. Yeah. Pull around to the chum shack in the back. And as for you, have a little dignity. Christ. Help! Somebody fucking help! help! Watch out for cops. Don't want to get pulled over with this asshole in the back seat. Whew. Shit. <laughs> For a couple of years there, I really thought I might be done with all the Jimmy Cagney bullshit. But here I am. Ronnie, I kind of figured you for more the Edward G. Robinson type. <laughs> Look at you, kid. You know, God's got a sense of humor, too. It's sick as shit, but that motherfucker's got one. <laughs> oh, oh, please! I didn't do nothing! Didn't do nothing. You were getting ready to fucking kill me. I was just doing what Uncle Sal told me to do. Nah, that fuck never liked me. I get it. But this? You never tried anything like this before. I don't... 
I know. Come on, Mikey. Why do you want me gone all of a sudden? He said you were a carpet baggage. Never should have been down here in the first place. <laughs> you want me to keep going? You got nine more! Fuck! Listen, Jesus! He was worried you knew about the casino! And so we're gonna play up to Leo and the commission! What casino? Answer the question. Uncle Sally's... You, you, you see that construction across the lake? He's building a casino over there! He wants to go legit! Turn this city into Las Vegas! Gambling's illegal! Uh, yeah, no shit, it's illegal! Uh, which is why he's paid a bunch of money to get the lost chain! Who else is involved in this? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I swear it! <laughs> Look, I... I told you what you wanted to know. You're gonna let me go now, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Stupid fucking prick. I'll clean this mess up. No reason for you to stick around. Remember our deal. I'm expecting to cut of everything you bring in. Yeah, I know how this shit works. You'll get your money. There's a woman named Alma. Helps me out sometimes. Cuban. Mean as fuck. She talk to her, see if she needs anything. Might be an easy way to bring in some extra money. Where's she at? At the warehouse. All right. What are you gonna do with him? Fish gotta eat like everyone else. At what point did you become aware that Sal Marcano wanted to build a casino north of the city? Pretty early on. Michael Greco told Lincoln about it. And Lincoln Clay's plan was to specifically target various entities related to Marcano's casino plan? Between the bribes he was paying out to get gambling legalized and the money needed to pay off the commission, Sal was stretched pretty thin. So Lincoln used that to his advantage. Forced Sal into making some extremely hard decisions. Decisions that would limit his options. I'm telling you, we make twice as much bread moving heroin as we would from a stupid fucking casino. Maybe three times. This ain't about the money. <laughs> You're joking, right? All I ever heard from you is, don't give me that goddamn excuses, you understand? You paid me what's fucking old! You think this is a game, <laughs> son? And it's my fault for playing along with you. We're not setting you straight. But it's not a game. This shit wears on you, grinds you down. I ain't had a decent night's sleep in 43 years. And then after Lucho, shit. Well, hey, we got the cocksuckers who did that. Every last one of them. Yeah, and your uncle's still dead, ain't he? Yeah. You think sitting in that chair makes you special, huh? Somehow puts you above all the bullshit. Well, it's the opposite. All it does is paint a giant goddamn bullseye on your forehead. There's a price to be paid for all this, you understand? And I'm tired of paying it. But mainly, I'm worried I'm gonna get a phone call telling me you're dead in a gutter somewhere. Well, what do you expect me to do, huh? Work the front door? Glad hand folks as they come on in, maybe give them a quick slap on the ass? You run it with me. And here, after a few years, after I know everything's settled down, you'll take over. Find yourself a nice woman. Give me some fucking grandkids. Sounds boring as fuck. It's the only way, son. The world is changing. Used to be people knew their place. Now everybody's screaming about equality. Now they all deserve a slice of the pie. Niggas, mix, gooks, you name it. Our way of doing things won't work in a world like that. Yeah. You come to me with something like this, Lou, you better be goddamn sure. Yeah. Lincoln Clay is still alive. Fuck me.
You think I forgot what you did? You can blame Marcana all you want, but it was your men who ambushed My us. My men were following orders. We got rules. Not my fucking problem that you people don't understand. Yeah, well, I'm about to make it your fucking problem. This shit is this time. Goddamn. If it ain't the city's favorite pot licking donkey, Thomas Burke. The fuck did you just say to me? Put the gun down, Burke. It's gonna take all four of us to bring down Marcano, so I don't want any more of this stupid bullshit. Bring down Marcano? These two used to work for Marcano. And this one? Do you know how many of my men this canard killed because Mark Connor told him to? Fuck him, and fuck you if you think I'm ever gonna trust him. Hey, these get the two. fuck out, then. There's no sweat off my ass. You don't trust him? Good. Because I don't trust any of you. But that doesn't change the fact that I destroyed Barbieri's operations, killed Doucette and those other redneck motherfuckers, and saved Joe ass from Greco's men. So here's what you need to decide right fucking here now. Either fall in line or get the fuck out. Just know. Second you step out that door, your name's getting added to my list, right beneath Marcano's. Now, if we're all done acting like goddamn children, let's go over the plan. In order to bring down an organization the size of Marcano's, we need to eliminate the people at the base and work our way up. It's the same thing I did not. <laughs> I know the military filled your noggin with all manner of tactics and schemes, but let's not overthink this shit. Let's see if we go out to his house and shoot him. Shouldn't take more than an hour or so, not pending on traffic. And what you think gonna happen after? Everybody else just gonna lay down and die, you stupid ass motherfucker. Oh, Cassandra's nice. right. Just killing Marcano doesn't get us anywhere. One of his brothers will take over and we're right back where we started. So. First, we go after his lieutenants. Then, once they're killed, we seize their territory and move on to the Capos. Once the lieutenants and the Capos are killed, Marcano will be isolated and alone. And that's when we go after him. Hold on, what happens to those territories we get from Marcano's guys? Once it's in our hands, I'll decide who gets to run the day to day. I give you a district, you get the rackets and everything else. But I'm also counting on you to hold it. Keep that bastard from reclaiming it. One last thing. Y'all know that building that's going up across the lake? Hmm? It's building a casino. Marcano's constructing this so he can go legit. All his money's tied up into that thing, so once he figures out what we're up to, it'll limit his options. More importantly, it's an emotional attachment. Emotions make people irrational, greedy. So that's where we hit him. Right in the goddamn heart. Hey, nice speech. Think they bought it? Don't care. They're all too greedy or pissed off of Marcano to back out now. At least until one of them decides to try the crown on for size. Well, if it comes to that, I'll handle it. The photos were a nice start and all, but I'm gonna need some actionable intel on those lieutenants. A place of business, where I can find them, you name it. The dossiers are nearly complete. I'll be ready to move when you are. Mm -hmm. I was also able to recruit some concerned citizens who are more than happy to share what they know about Sal's coalition of WAP assholes. Information on how to contact them will be included with the other intel. Appreciate it. Sure you don't need a ride? Oh, I do my own driving. Ooh. And the uh, systematic killing of Marcano's capos and lieutenants, that was part of the plan. Well, you're implying fucking patty cake, Christ. Look, you want to bring somebody down, you destroy the foundation they're standing on. It's the same basic op we ran over Nam. I don't know how you people live down here. It's hot, it's humid. Most of the time it smells like that goddamn river. It smells all right to me. You know what it is. It stinks of mud. Wet, rotten mud. It's been buried down deep for way too fucking long. And the Mekong Delta had that same goddamn stench. Hated it then, hate it now. So, what'd you find out? 
Franco Frank Pagani runs Tikfa Harbor. Reports up to Tommy Marcano, and he has a ship called the Tanager, which he uses to smuggle shit in and out of the city. For the past eight months, he's been making regular trips to Bermuda. What's in Bermuda? <laughs> Not a goddamn thing. He's really been going to Cuba. Marcano used to run the mob casinos down in Havana. My assumption is that Frank has been taking whatever is salvageable from the old casinos and bringing it back up here. That's a lot of effort to reuse some old tables and slot machines. There's got to be something else going on. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't walk up to Frank and ask him. He's in Havana now, and he isn't scheduled to be back anytime soon. I mean, we gotta force him to change his travel plans. Frank's businesses are centered around stolen cars and freight. Look for places that'll support that kind of activity. Once you start taking them down, he'll come home. All right. I'll put a tap on the Coast Guard and let you know when the Tanager contacts them. So you the scary motherfucker who go and deal with Junior Holland. Nice to meet you too, lady. Set it down. I don't mean anything by it. I'm Gina Kowalski. My old man and I used to boost cars with Junior before he decided to burn us and throw in with Marcano. I don't see your old man around. Died in a cell upstate around Easton. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> he shouldn't have got caught. Junior's running cars out of the best old gas station around the way. Got some pros that come around with high-end rides. Hell. He even got a sideline bootlegging gasoline from the refinery. Where are the cars going? He sells some here, but knowing how many nice new rides gone missing lately, I'm guessing Junior's getting ready to run a bunch in a shipment out of town. If he's got people out on the street, I'll get him to talk. Maybe even get word about the pros he's got working for him. See you around, Gina. Junior's boys don't scare easy, but you still need to get some of them to talk. Junior's looking pretty fucked now, isn't he? You got that little speed freak Junior stayed up out here. Didn't plan on doing any less. <laughs> an old friend with an E out at the best oil say Junior come blowing through, making everybody's life a living hell. And he won't leave until he can get the business right. <laughs> Never heard of Junior Holland being so dang motivated. When you have to kick up to Sal Marcano, that'll light a fire in the ass. That and all the speed he's on. When you whip his ass, Tell him he shouldn't have messed with Gina Kowalski. <laughs> I'll catch you later, Gina. Junior's a dirty, backstabbing piece of shit. Go get him. Guess this still beats a day job. You want to end up like that? Is that what you want? some of your crew to hold tick four. Okay, my boys are gonna come over and make sure it's all nice and locked down. But I ain't doing it as a favor. I expect you to look out for me. Remember, we're supposed to take down Marcano together. Anyone who thinks Sammy Robinson was the Mardi Gras mastermind is a moron. And just because he was involved doesn't mean it was his idea. And none of the evidence ever added up. The money wasn't recovered, and Sammy didn't shoot himself in the back of the head and then burn down his own bar. The only reason people believe Sammy was behind it was his skin color.
<clears throat> I just picked up this call between Mr. Frank Pagani and Tommy Marcano. The first voice you're gonna hear is Frank's. The fuck you mean is gone? He came in and killed everybody. Christ, what a goddamn mess. I ain't never seen Sal so pissed. You gotta get your ass back here like right fucking now. Sal's pissed? What about me, huh? Down here busting my ass, and now I have to deal with this shit? I told you I take care of you and I stand by that. When you're back in town and things calm down, I'll make it right. Yeah, well, you fucking better. Boat's taking off here in a few minutes. I gotta finish up with some things. Then I'll fly back when I can. I checked with Vessel Traffic Services, and they're expecting the Tanager to arrive any time now. Frank's a slippery bastard, so I have no idea where he'll end up once he's back in the city. His car is on the Tanager, though. And from what I hear, he loves that goddamn thing. So if I can get onto the boat and plant this, I'll be able to track wherever he goes. It's the same model we use against the Soviets. It has a mercury-based trigger. Once you see the signal, just follow it. After I put this onto his car, we'll take apart the rest of his district. No sense in leaving any loose ends. I'm sure Frank will appreciate your thoroughness. <laughs> So anyway, the guy challenges Frank to a race for pink slips, but the asshole turns pussy, doesn't... That's his car? I think you've been waiting for me. Yeah. Pablo Duarte, you're with the company? Not exactly. That gonna be a problem? If you can help keep money from going to those communist bastards in Cuba, then no. You with the Cuban Revolutionary Council? I made it through that disaster back in 61. Ended up here. I still have connections, though. It's how Frank Pagani's smuggling operation got on my radar. His man, Pops Holland, runs the freight yard. Does a lot of business with Havana. <laughs> All that commie talk about common ownership is so much bullshit, it's sickening. Those hijos de puta only care about money. Since losing River Row, Pops has had to resort to airdrops. They moved them around, so you'll have to find out where they're happening. I'm sure Pops' people will be more than happy to help me out. I'll be back, Pablo. The fuckers working for Pops Holland know what he's up to. You're gonna need to get at them. Not getting any more cargo out to Cuba. Good. You somehow managed to piss off both the communists and the gangsters. Word is Pops Holland is seriously fucked thanks to you. Best way to make a crook squirm is to hurt his money. Huh. Yeah. I heard Frank Pagani told Pops to get his ass back to the freight yard. Pops isn't going anywhere until you're dealt with. I understand he's a hard motherfucker. He's a survivor. Thanks for looking out, Pablo. But I dealt with a lot worse than Pops. Go get that commie loving piece of shit, Holland. You think I should ask out Alice? Works in the office. Alice Holland. Because you remember her dad is your fucking boss, and her brother is a homicidal fucking tweaker. So, you don't think it's a good idea? You need to worry about that. Don't end you, Pat. Pops. 
We shouldn't be working with those communist fucks. Uh, their money's the same color as everybody else's. Uh, don't change the fact that Cuba was on the verge of shoving a bunch of nukes up our asses. Listen here. I hate those filthy communists as much as anyone else. But if I only worked with folks I liked, I'd be penniless and living in a ditch. Y'all just worry about it. <laughs> Of course. If we're gonna hold Tick for Harbor, I'm gonna need some of your guys. Yeah, okay. But if you're asking me to commit the lives of my men here, then I expect you to commit to me. And remember this road we're setting out on in the here and now. The investigation was a mess from the very start. The locals did everything they could to keep us out of it, but that wasn't the worst of it. Someone actually broke into our offices and not only stole all of our files, but they also took most of our surveillance equipment. I got a hit from the device you put on Frank Pagani's car, which means he's back in town. <laughs> Bet he's pretty excited to make your acquaintance. I bet he is. <laughs> Signal's clean so you can take it from here. Just use the tracker I gave you. Catch you later. Looks like the place. Working for Marcana. Used to be a life in here. My daddy, my uncles. Sure, they saw some action, but they always came out whole. What's your point, kid? Just feels like I missed out on the best time. Huh?
I never did anything to you. It's all some interesting stuff back there. Counterfeit money, a press. Only thing I can't figure out is a connection to Cuba. Please. I'm all busted up inside. I need a doctor. I got a wife and three little girls. Hey, you want a doctor? Then you better tell me something worth hearing. Listen, what you saw, Sal set all that up. None of the money was worth a shit, though. They had me bring in a man named Alvarez, counterfeiter who works for Castro. He give you the plates, too? Plates? I thought you knew, on account of the robbery. Robbery? <laughs> Mokano wanted the plates from the Federal Reserve. How do I find Alvarez? Uh, How? Well, one of Tommy's guys picked him up. It was 10, 15 minutes before you showed up. Where are they taking him? Uh, Where? Huh? My little girls. No. Uh. I spent the last 48 years pursuing Lincoln Clay because he's a criminal. It's horrible what happened to him, but you know something? I think that when Sammy Ellis and Danny Burke were killed, it revealed who Lincoln Clay really was, a monster. Motherfucker, you look like the cat who ate the canary. This here's our first step toward breaking Marcano and taking over the city. I hear what y'all got to say, but I decide who gets the turf, and in the end, my decision is final. Well, hear this, Lincoln. You can make any final decisions you want to make, but splitting the action in one of these districts between my men and theirs ain't happening. This turf comes to me. Why, boys, are your problem? Jesus, shut the fuck up. My guys aren't down there boozing with the neighbors or igniting some kind of race war. They're making money. For you. That's all that matters. So forget all this hippie bullshit, and let's get to work. You ain't too late to change your mind, lad. I can handle both rockets without any of the bitching these two got going on right now. This one's all you, Bert. We ain't your private army sitting around waiting to lock shit down when you need us. We got expectations. Expectations that you are sadly falling short of. And what, pray tell, do you propose I say to my men who put their lives on the line for you? Forget it. There's nothing to be said, nothing that justifies it. Can't wait to get started on her, on everyone that comes after her as well. We're done for now. You'll hear from me if I need you. Look, I gave you some names and I'm paying you to chase them down, so don't give me any of that bullshit. Yeah, okay, just get it done. Christ, sometimes I think if you want something done right. You all right? The nighty. Sammy was so happy. Happier than I ever seen him. That money was supposed to get him, get all of us out from under Marcano. Motherfucker! What the hell did Frank tell you? Marcano had us rob the reserve so he could get his hand on a set of money plates. Georgie must have grabbed him during the robbery. I should have been paying attention. We already had this conversation. None of this is your fault. It's like hell it isn't. Sal is a cancer. A leech. He had always intended to fuck all of you. Christ, look what he did to Vito. He murdered your family. The only way to make that right is by killing every cocksucker who's ever looked at that piece of shit. Give me some of that bourbon. According to Pagani, Marcano couldn't print the money himself, so he had a Cuban counterfeiter named Alvarez brought in. What do we know about South Downs? Tommy Marcano isn't the kind of guy who shits where he eats, so his rackets are pretty low key. He runs a sports book and has a place where he stores his contraband. Tommy's got to know that I'm coming after Alvarez, so he's probably got him holed up in or near one of those places. One way or another, I'll get my hands on him. I'll be damned if I let Marcano print a single fucking dollar from one of those plates.
why I became a priest? Because of what you saw during the war. That... That was a lie. I became a priest because of what I did during the war. What it turned me into. When I was over there, crammed together with all the other disposable Negroes, all the hurt, all the rage I'd accumulated over my life came boiling up, and once it was out, well, you don't want to know. I doubt anyone's losing sleep over some dead Nazis. That's not the point. The men I killed, killing them should have meant something to me. Should have had weight, but it didn't. And glimpsing what was buried down inside me, it, it, it was too much. I know who I am. I know you do, son. And that's what terrifies me. They say the good Lord only burdens us with what we can carry. But sometimes I wonder if that ain't a lie. You hear about them boys that got shot over in South Downs? Colored, unarmed. McCall and Harris. Papers say some white man shot him because he heard there was some scary colored soldier going around murdering white folks. Huh. You're sweet Danny Little. <laughs> you follow boxing? Some. A friend who worked for my old man was obsessed. Said you go to distance. You got that championship match coming up, right? Yeah, that's kind of why I need your help. These Marcano cats. Man, they got this dude called Two Dicks Peralta running a sports book out the Wilcox Saloon. Comes up to me while I'm sparring. Tells me I gotta go down in the fifth. Or else. What'd you say? She told him kiss my ass. Next day, somebody broke my brother's arm in three places. You all right? It's how they do. I hear Two Dicks even grab with that boy Eddie Kenner. Except I think Two Dicks got his eye on Eddie doing some off-book fighting for him. He hear things about nigga fights here and there. Make a lot of money if you know how those fights go in. Christ. I'll go after two dicks people, see if I can find out more about how he runs things, maybe even find Eddie. You better start talking to Peralta's people if you want to know what he's up to. Folks don't want to place bets since you let loose on two dicks. Hey, two dicks came by the gym. Between getting Eddie free and whatever else you've been doing, the man is pissed. What'd he say? Got into it with one of the fighters. Pulled his gun, waved it around. Heard him tell one of his boys to be back at Wilcox Saloon. You go on and get back to training for that fight. I'll deal with that asshole. Go on. That asshole two dicks is waiting for you. Check this out. Send some guys to South Downs, help keep it in our hands. Sure, I'll send my guys. But when it comes time to hand over the district, I expect to be running all the rackets. Not some, all.
Why had I become a priest? Every bad thing you experience, every trauma, they, they never leave you. Sure, you might forget about them for a while, but when the next one comes along, no matter how slight, it brings everything back. It reminds you of the weight you've been lugging around. I knew I couldn't carry all that on my own. You Purdue? Grant Purdue. You like the place? I'm thinking. Yeah, so how are you mixed up with Marcano's organization? Friend, I own and run department stores. But with this economy, well, I've got a lot of extra inventory, clothes, electronics, you name it. An old friend, Artie Higgins, says to me, Grant, it's all insured. Let me take it off your hands. You mean you let him rob you? My trucks, yeah. It was just supposed to be a one-time deal, but heck, Artie just won't stop. I can't take the fall here. Where's Artie take the trucks? He never told me, but last time we talked, I got the impression he was going to offload them to someone else. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, 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 fence? Grant, if I find your stuff, it's likely going up in flames. Oh, whatever you have to do to stop Artie. My gosh darn insurance has dropped me. Says I'm high risk. Can you believe that? You bring me that truck, there's money in it for you. Artie's got some of his men working around South Downs. Thieves, all of them. I'll see what I can dig up. In the meantime, you stay out of sight. I really think you should see what Artie's guys know about my trucks. Artie's people have finally stopped going after my trucks. Thank you. Artie called me a bit ago. Spent 20 minutes chewing my behind all the pieces. Told me he wanted to meet me at, um, at Mama Rigetti's Bakery, wherever that is. Don't worry. Won't take me long to find it. Well, I'm glad you're going after him. No one raises his voice at Grant Purdue, buddy. The nerve. Word of the wise, don't get in bed with mobsters. You'll live longer. Now, I don't want to tell you how to do what you do, but if Art is at the bakery, you should do something about him. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Jesus, Hardy, Mikey wasn't the one who fucked up. He was just the one bringing the news. I don't want to hear shit about Mikey. I want to hear how a man I've done business with for the better part of ten years I was killed in my motherfucking... Oh. 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 trying to ask me! Run up a cup. Now I got him! Uh. 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 I knew it. I knew it. I can't fucking believe it. Maybe this will help. If I'm gonna keep hold of South Downs, I'm gonna need some help. Your wish is my command, boy. Consider it done. Tired of getting sand kicked in your face. <sighs> got to do calisthenics three times a week. Keep my heart rate up. You got blood on your shirt. Oh, ah, uh, cut myself shaving. There's something that you need to hear. Alvarez surfaced, intercepted this call a little while ago. Compañero, 
I don't understand a word of that. You mind translating? <laughs> Basically, you scared the shit out of Alvarez. He's ready to hightail it back to Cuba. Wants his dear Uncle Zaraga to come rescue him. And what did Zaraga say? He told him to meet him at the lighthouse on the southern edge of the bayou. He'd send a boat to pick him up. I'm guessing that was a lie. <laughs> Zaraga was a police officer back in Havana when Batista was still running the country. He also provided security for Sal's casinos. The two of them go way back. As soon as Zaraga hung up the phone, he called Sal and told him where he could find his nephew. Which means I need to get down there before Marcano's men. Sal's not gonna fuck around when it comes to Alvarez, so make sure your shit's squared away. <laughs> English. <laughs> See? I killed the men outside. I only want to talk to you, so I'm gonna put my gun down, all right? If you try and fuck me, I kill you! Fair enough. You are the one who wants to kill me! I wasn't trying to kill you, I was trying to find you. Your uncle, he sold you out. He ain't coming to get you. You're lying. I just spoke to him. He said he was sending a boat. Wait, you think it's a coincidence that as soon as you got here, those grease balls showed up? Zaraga called Marcano, told him where to find you. I, I must find a phone. Jesus, man, there's no one for you to call. Marcano was never going to let you out of this city. He's going to use you, and when he gets what he wants, he's going to kill you. The only shot of getting out of this alive is me. What do you want from me? Tell me where Marcano's counterfeit operation is set up and we're square. Everything is uh, in a boxing ring that Tony Marcano owns, but it's already up and running. Yeah, that's all I need to know. Come on. It's time we got the hell out of here. Where are you taking me? I know someone who can get you out of the city. Make sure Marcano doesn't find you. Yeah. If you want to live through this, stick close to me. You understand? I see. As I walk along, I wonder oh, what went wrong with our I can get us. No. So Just take mine. If it'll get you out of here, sure. Just keep your head down. Hey, yo! Hey, the fuck back!
That was the last of them. I think. Yeah, well, keep an eye out anyway. You could have killed me. Put a bullet in my head and still fuck Marcano. You got a question in there somewhere? Yeah. Why didn't you? Just didn't sit right. Look, you didn't do anything to me. As far as I can tell, you're just another person in the long line of folks Marcano's fucked over. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Okay. Fuckers! Getting this man out of the city. He's in a lot of trouble with Salman Khan. I, I don't, I don't. Hey, this is who you told me about? Yeah, he's the one. Listen, father, I'm really counting on you here. I got nowhere else I can take him. Shit, I'm. All right. I know a Jesuit in New Mexico. He helps people in situations like this. What well, needs to happen right now? Marcano's gonna tear this city apart and look for him. All right, I'll make the call. Pasa, por favor. Aquí estás a salvo. Gracias. I appreciate this. the city good he told me you saved his life all i did was get him away from marcano's men and thank god for that let me ask you something you ever hear how sal marcano wound up running this city him and his brothers killed a few guys and took over he sold out his own father lincoln watched him die and then he killed every man standing in his way butchered them them and anyone else he thought was a risk, warranted or not. How do you know that? Oh, the priest. The sanctity of the confessional isn't always absolute. I'm not an idiot, Lincoln. You're a criminal. Sammy was a criminal. I accepted that a long time ago. But there's a difference between being a criminal and being a Sal Marcano. I'm not Sal Marcano. Easy to say that now, but what about when this is over, when there's no one standing in your way? I haven't decided yet. You're a good man, Lincoln. I know it's odd to hear that, considering everything you've done. But it's true. You have it in you. I've seen it. But you're gonna have to decide, have to choose, whether you let all of this consume you, pervert you, turn you into the very thing you hate. Hey there, precious. <laughs> Tommy Marcano brought in a counterfeiter from Cuba, right? Well, Sal spent a couple of months trying to print the money himself, but none of it was worth a damn. The color was wrong, printing was cockeyed, you name it. He needed someone who knew what the fuck they were doing. So he used his connections and found a man named Alvarez. And this Alvarez was also counterfeiting money for Castro. Most of our enemies counterfeit American money. Hell, some of our allies do too. Sorry, he's gone. What do you mean, he's gone? All you had to do is drive down to the goddamn lighthouse and pick him up. It's not my fault Alvarez is running all over the goddamn place. I wanted to lock his ass up, but you wouldn't hear of it. The last thing we need is Zaraga finding out that we treated his nephew like dog shit. You understand? Then Lincoln Clay comes in shooting the shit out of it. Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. I'm so sick and fucking tired of hearing about this cocksucker. He's just one man. A fucking nigga. We're skating a thin line here, Tommy. You understand? This thing falls apart. We fucked all of us. So, what the fuck would you do? What the fuck would I do? Listen here, this ain't rocket science. If that fucking nigga got to Alvarez, it means he knows about the plate. He's gonna come after him, you understand? Get your ass down to that motherfucking gym and protect them. Yeah, sure. I'm on it. This shit ends right here, right now. No more fuck-ups. <sighs> Fuck me. 
According to these reports, Tommy Marcano had the money press in a boxing gym he operated. Tommy knew Lincoln was coming for the plates, but he felt he had to keep up appearances. The second he started canceling fights and shutting the place down was the second people started thinking he was out of his league. He wasn't about to allow that to happen. How did Lincoln Clay gain access to the gym? He had me track down a man named Alcee Bennett. Alcee is a small-time hustler that worked for Sammy until he double-crossed him and was kicked out of the hollow. After that, he scratched out a living recruiting fighters for Tommy's jungle fights. <laughs> if he vouched for Lincoln at the door, Lincoln could get in without a big ruckus. Alcee's by the briar patch, not far from here. I'll stop by and say hello, see how he's getting along. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> well, fuck me running. If it ain't Lincoln Clay. Surprised to see me, Alcee? Mm, I heard about Sammy and Ellis. Tough break. I guess you made it out okay. Speak of them once more, and I'll slice you from here to asshole. Let's go. I'm taking a drive. Assuming I don't have a choice here. What do you think? Lead the way. since November of 62. Almost six years. I know. Can you at least tell me where we're going? The Acadia. It's where Tommy Marcano holds his jungle fights, right? It is. And you've been recruiting black fighters for him? I have. Good. Because I want in. What? Why? I wanted you to know I'd have told you. If I'm sticking my ass out like that, I need to know why. Motherfucker, you lucky to be alive after what you did to Sammy. You really think he wouldn't notice you stealing all that money? Look, I paid for that a hundred times over. Six years banished from the only place I ever call home. Christ, I couldn't even go see my mama on her deathbed. You made your choice. And now it's time to make another one. And I do this. You get a clean slate. Come and go through the hollow as you please. Fuck. Okay. I hear if you win out, Tommy meets you in person. That true? He likes the size of the winners. See if there's someone he wants to bring on regular. Or if they're just a one-time deal. Where's this happen? Usually up there in his office. One of his guys will meet you in the locker room after the fight. He'll take you to time it. All right. Fighters don't take the front entrance. We go in through the side door. Who the fuck's this? This? This Jack Nap Johnson. What's he here for? Fuck you mean what he here for? He here to fight, boy. Gotta search him. No weapons allowed. All units, search is called. Do what you gotta off. do. Repeat, Watch search. where you put Return your hands, motherfucker. Save it for the ring, dipshit. Go ahead. Locker rooms down here on the east. Hang back, boys. Motherfucker needs a doctor. Just dump him in an alley. Let nature take its course. You good now. Go on. How you, Neville? Where you at, out, see? All right. I gotta go make the arrangements. Give them your name and such. You go on and get changed. Who you got with you tonight, Elsie? New guy. New guy looks tough, but my money's staying on the brawler. I gotta ask you something, Elsie. What's that? Do all you niggas love beating the fuck out of each other? <laughs> nah, we'll beat the fuck out of anyone. <laughs> Even you. So what happens if we get caught? Probably what you think. <sighs> For a chance to go home again. 
It's worth it. No matter what happens, we should go. This is it. You nervous? Should I be? Guess that depends on where all this ends. You're gonna head through these doors and they announce your name. Then make your way to your corner. Where are you going? Oh, I'll meet you there. This part of the show is all about you. They love showing off their fighting niggas. Go on, they're waiting on you. And the jungle fights continue, boys! The next challenger to face Nick Boom Boom Beaumont comes in at over six feet tall, weighing approximately 220 pounds. This is Jack Knife Johnson! You assholes can eat a pile of shit! to start something. Uh, Motherfuckers uh, over here! Uh, to the brawl. You gotta keep moving and don't let him get you in the corner. Stay out of the corner. Got it. back to the locker room to collect your winnings. Where are you headed? Me? I got business to attend to. Sorry about that. Few Watch niggas really know how to brawl. Uh, my respect, that's for fucking sure. Lucky. You must think I'm some kind of goddamn moron coming in here like you did. I've never been one to shy away from a calculated risk. Maybe you should have. Mix some vegetable oil in. Makes the gasoline thick, sticky. We're just gonna let it soak in a little bit. <laughs> Work his way into every nook and cranny. <laughs> that way, when I light it, that shit's gonna burn like napalm. And you, you are gonna hurt like no one's hurt before. Fuck you. 
Guess you ready to die. You still be conscious as the flames creep up your legs. But as they bind, <coughs> you be hit in the gut with a sickening revelation. Before you die, you gonna feel your peck up burn. It's gonna curl and twist. <coughs> 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 Gonna bury you! I need to catch my breath. Blood. You don't have to do this. We can work something out. Only thing needs working out of your funeral arrangements. That's that, then. Sure looks that way. You know, Sal wanted me to go to law school. Work for some big company. Maybe run for office. Do something decent with your goddamn life, you understand? Should've listened to him. It's in the blood, you know. <laughs> yeah. You are who you are. No point arguing with yourself about it. Fuck you. I don't deserve this! I don't deserve this! Don't worry. Lou and Sal will be along no. shortly. What the fuck? to the money plates that Sal Marcano stole from the Federal Reserve. I don't recall. Georgie, get your ass in here. Your Uncle Tommy's dead. I thought you'd like to know. Sorry, Pops. I, oh, man, I know what he meant to you. And... He was a smart kid, your Uncle Tommy. Could have been anything. I tried to tell him, go to college. Even offered to pay for it. <laughs> Instead, he went to Cuba. It's not your fault. Yeah. Well, we're pretty well fucked now, you understand? I, mean, I was counting on that counterfeit money without him. Yeah. Oh, 
Well, now there's gotta be something we can do. You go put the squeeze on people. Get to increase what they're kicking up. It ain't gonna be enough. Just because you poke holes in someone doesn't mean you're gonna get anything extra out of them. You could always call Leo Galanti, ask him to front... Fuck him! The whole reason I'm building this goddamn casino is to get out from under them worthless fucks. Now I bring in the commission, they're gonna wanna cut everything. God damn it. Go on, get the hell out of here. I gotta make a call. Get out! Shit. Leo! <laughs> How the fuck are you? It's Sal. Yeah? L listen, I, I got something I need to discuss. I tried to reconcile the part of me that helped Lincoln with the part of me that vowed to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. But I can't. You know what I remember? I remember watching the news and learning they had gunned down Dr. King I remember watching people lash out, riot, because that's all they had left. All the while, Lincoln's in the other room, barely clinging to life. Maybe that's why I did what I did. We've wasted enough time. Let's go. South Downs belongs to us. Tommy was smart and set up some solid, low-key rackets there. Should be a smooth transition for us. Irish Am ever had as much money as what we got here working with you. And we're committed to squeezing every last goddamn dime out of this town. They teach you these kind of games over in Nam? Keep pitting people who are loyal to you against each other? Making them feel like they could be close to dying at any moment? Newsflash! You ain't in Vietnam no more. You come in here preaching patience and understanding. Yet out there, you just fuck with us. Last time you called me to secure one of those rackets, I didn't see jack shit for it. This time you don't call me at all. Consider yourself warned, cause I'm on the fucking edge. You need Vito to run this turf. No, no. I can't believe I ever let you talk me into this. I'm not just gonna sit here and allow you to lie to my fucking face. Hey, hey! I know you're used to your little Haitian boys bowing to your every whim, but that shit don't work around here, Cassandra. So cool it. My patience, my understanding, it's gone, Lincoln. You correct this course we own, or there ain't no words that can walk us back from where we headed. We're all after the same thing, Cassandra. Mixing it up between us isn't getting us anywhere. You've said your piece, Cassandra. Let it go. Y'all don't have to like the decisions I make. And to be honest, your egos are the least of my fucking concerns. The way I see it, you fall in line or you fall out altogether. Now let's go make some fucking money. This part of town's run by a man named Tony D'Orazio. From what I was able to piece together, he's a real fucking weirdo. Some kind of savant when it comes to numbers. Then he must be the one who runs Lou Marcano's books. Runs his books, launders his money. Hell, he even manages Lou's relationships with city officials. It's Tony's job to make sure their asses stay greased. How do I get to him? Well, that's where things get interesting. Tony lives in the penthouse on the top floor of the Royal Hotel. Elevator access is restricted, and the rest of the hotel's crawling with Tony's goons. Well, he can't stay up there all the time. I'm gonna need a schedule for when he comes and goes. I've been watching this cocksucker for a month now, and he's left exactly one time. That was because one of his men fucked up. Took a pipe to the poor bastard's left arm. Well, 
looks like he's got a front business he uses to issue bribes and lawn to lose money. And another one that soaks up funds from the city. I hit him. He overreacts. Then I get my opening. And fuck up things between him and Lou in the process. Be careful with this one. Just because Tony's a goddamn spastic doesn't mean he won't cut your balls off if given the chance. Really? Shrimp. What you call me? I Shrimp. have a subscription. You, you don't wear continental clothes <laughs> or a Stetson what are you? hat. Uh, are you him? The man I'm supposed to meet? I heard you have information for me. The name's Lenny Davis. I work in the city clerk's office, and your friend said you could help with this guy blackmailing me. What kind of juice makes you someone worth blackmailing? My office approves new projects under development. I... I fucked up, cheated on my wife, and this guy, Jimmy Kavar, filmed it. Come to find out the girl worked for Kavar, too. And now he owns you. He's forcing me to rubber stamp phony building projects and cash the checks for his company, Kavar Construction. Probably seen the signs over where they're building the new city hall. Thing is, Kaval doesn't really come around unless there's a problem. Don't worry. I'm pretty good at causing people problems. Some of his men hang out around downtown. Look, I ain't a bad guy. I, I just made a mistake is all. Keep your head down, Lenny. I'll pay Kaval's men a visit. See what they know. Kaval's people will know more about what he's doing than I will. How many mysterious construction is a wreck? Now, Mr. Kaval's so really PO'd. Jimmy Kavar called. He's at the City Hall construction site and wants to see me. He knows. I don't know how, but he knows I've been helping you people. He's gonna kill me, or I'm going to jail. Then he'll kill me. Oh, God. Go home to your wife, Lenny. Pack a bag, get out of town for a couple days. When you get back, this will all be over. You'll talk to Jimmy? Sure. Kavar's waiting for you. To I'm gonna follow your advice. Get out of town. What was City even doing there? Queen killed his ass fucking dead. Apologies. It was supposed to be a no-show job. Show up in shitty luck. Huh? Luck my ass. That man was sabotage. Why the hell do you think we're all down here busting our asses? You and me? We need to keep our heads on a swivel. Send whoever you got downtown. We gotta secure her while we can. Whatever you say, my guys will be right over. Now maybe you're worried about Cassandra kicking up a fuss or something when it comes to the district. But after the work my guys are putting in, I expect to get it. I was discharged, I wandered around for a couple, three months, did some odd jobs. I got arrested once or twice for fighting. But I always kind of knew I was going into seminary. It just took a little while for it to sink in, I suppose. 
Once I was done with seminary, Bishop Jenkins sent me to St. Michelle's home for colored boys. <laughs> that orphanage was a pile of shit from the day I got there till the day I left. <laughs> but I loved it. <laughs> I loved helping those boys. You the reporter? Harold Cawley. That's Hatler. I'm covering Dorazio's little corruption racket. Can't imagine it's good for your health, naming names in the Marcano organization. Didn't you hear? Even cigarette smoke will kill you. So here's what I know. We've got city officials taking bribes. Blackmail. Juicy stuff. At the center of it all is a fellow named Frankie Bernard. The problem is, I don't know where he operates. Might make it kind of hard to find him. Ah, but the thing is, I hear Mr. Bernard uses debt drops. Spots where his people leave bribes for officials to pick up. And I just happen to know where they are. I also understand Frankie keeps a sweet blackmail stash of every dirty deal he's done. I'll see if I can't get one of those couriers to give up the location for your mystery man. And his little blackmail stash. The people working for Bernard are just as secretive as he is. You might have to find some way to get them to talk. Politician, you've, uh, really got poor Frankie in a bit of hot water over at the bathhouse. Sorry, shitty pun. <laughs> because of you, Tony D'Arazio is having a hard time controlling the city's politicos. So he's ordered Frankie to keep an eye on the Imperial. It's a third strike, you're dead situation. How do you think you'll handle old Frankie? That's all up to him. Hey, I could tag along, my camera's in the car, and... You want to dig up more dirt for your rag, you do it on your own time. I ain't gonna drag your libelous ass all over town. I get it. I get it. Be seeing you. If you kill Bernard, be sure to let me know what happened, okay? Oh, pardon me. But if you're gonna call yourself a secretary, fan it down and type up another goddamn copy yourself. Not let one of them machines run one off for you. Do I look worried to you? I'll buy her flowers, maybe something shiny, and it'll all... I thought Frankie had you all running money. Someone starts an offer. Well, I guess there are always more patients. What the hell is happening there? I respect the message, but it doesn't mean stop protesting. Huh? Go ahead and see ya. Huh? This Call the cops! You see what they're running from? So what? You gonna kill me now? Good idea. I'm downtown. Need some help securing it. I got the feeling Cassandra ain't exactly happy at the moment. Which means you're reaching out to me could rile her up even more. I'm fine operating with business as a top priority. But this better not come around and bite me in the arse. If you're ready to lay How did you manage to get to Tony D'Orazio? I had bugs and wiretaps all over the damn place. When that weirdo left the Royal Hotel to deal with one of his men, I was listening. Tony, I didn't know you was coming. I'm just packing away your latest shipment. How long you been running this business, Joe? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Five, six years? Five years, three months, and 18 days. Well, this is turned. Look, I, I know I've been lied, but it ain't my fault. I've always placed a premium on maintaining order. If you let the rot set in, eventually it will take hold and destroy everything you've built. The only solution is to isolate it. Eradicate it before it takes hold. 
You understand, Joe? Christ, Donnie, you gotta listen to me. Some nuts out there shooting hell out of everything. You know how many of my men he killed? Yes. Dominic, is it? You will take the armored car and personally oversee the collection of all outstanding monies owed to us. Am I clear on this? Y yes, Mr. Razio. Once you have collected what is due, deliver it directly to me at the hotel. The code to the elevator is 0451. From there, Lincoln had a couple of options. He could use the elevator code and go into the lobby, which meant shooting the hell out of the place. Or he could steal Dominic's car and go in quiet through the hotel's parking garage. When you're in the hotel, grab a couple of those little fancy soaps. <laughs> they won't give me any more at the motel. Taking so long. Guess we should check that. It would be difficult not to. What? I've already taken the appropriate steps to address the situation. Believe me, things are well in hand. Well, they fucking better be. If this thing with the judge goes sideways, shit's gonna roll downhill real fucking quick. We haven't lost anything of any significance except for some men, and they can be replaced. In fact, they're the easiest thing to replace. Saul doesn't give two shits about any of those stupid fucks. All he cares about is the people that matter. Understand? I understand completely. And you have my word that all payments will continue as scheduled. None of our business associates need to concern themselves with our recent difficulties. Yeah? Okay. I'm counting on you here, Tony. Don't fuck this up. Goodbye.
You should clear on out of here. Okay, here's the thing, Congressman. When me... <laughs> Shit. Right now? Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Follow him. See? You certainly are audacious, aren't you? Filthy fucking mongrel. You really think you know how all this is gonna play out, don't you? <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> Go ahead. <coughs> Kill me. I'll be replaced tomorrow. <laughs> no one will even notice. You're wrong. Everyone will notice. <laughs> War on the streets of our fair city is a gunman stormed the Royal Hotel, killing an untold number of men. There was a loud crash, like a bomb going off. I looked up, and there was a man falling from the top of the building. Then all these men showed up, and every one of them had a gun. They ran into the Royal, and that's when the shooting started. <laughs> I still don't know how the hell Lincoln got out of that hotel. Done here. Keep your guns on that goddamn elevator. Get up and see if he's still in there. Hey there, ma'am. Huh? Oh, 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 This is where we find which direction you and I are headed. Not coming to me to lock down this action. Don't break you free from your word. I still expect you to deliver this piece of the city to me. You need to let this play out, Cassandra. I understand your position, but I need to hear from everyone. Cassandra can do all the foot stomping she wants. My guys secured half this district, and I expect their work to be rewarded. I know things with the lady over here are tense, but that's your problem. Me boys got half this district secured for you. If I gotta go explain that they're workers for nothing, it'll be nothing but bad news. Thought about what you said, Cassandra, and I want us to step back off the edge and work together. This territory is yours. I appreciate you stepping up like this. All I ever wanted was to be heard, recognized as an equal. We done? Because I got a thing. If you already know which way you're leaning when you walk in, just fucking say it. And stop wasting my goddamn time. All right, that's it. We're done for now. Police are intensifying their 
a search for the colored male believed to be responsible for the massacre at the Royal Hotel. The suspect is described as six feet three inches and is believed They're to be saying you threw Tony off the roof of the Royal? Actually, it was through his penthouse window. You always had a flair for the dramatic. Tony's ledger. Last couple pages are pretty interesting. Any idea what US 5CJ means? Wait a minute. Holy shit. Why is Lou willing to comp 10 grand a month at a brothel and the same at a drug den? Based on what Greco told me in Scaletta, Marcano's laying out a bunch of money to get gambling legalized. And if that's what you're after, who better to have in your pocket? Than a judge on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, US 5CJ. Exactly. There have to be over 20 judges on that bench. Could be any one of them. The kind of man we're talking about isn't used to people getting into his business. I start visiting the places listed in that ledger, he'll panic and go to Lou for help. And that's when we'll find out who he is. Keep that wiretap running. Never turn it off. Well, if it isn't my favorite local newsmaker. Carly, assume you're still publishing that rag of yours. If it bleeds, it leads. And with you out there doing what you're doing, Christ. Can't print copies fast enough. You have something for me? Whores. You want high-end whores in the French ward? You go to Handsome Harry Rubber Show. Lou Marcano's hand-picked man. Probably a safe bet that Lou funnels all his VIPs Harry's way. You like to fuck? Harry's the man you want to see. He's got it all covered. Hookers on the corner, porno shoots, and if you got the money, he'll let you live out your sickest fantasies. Usually a good idea to cut off the big money first. Hurt an asshole like Harry right out of the gate. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. New Bordeaux's Blue Bloods cotton sex scandal. Or maybe the city's dark, perverted heart. I'll see what kind of information I can get out of Harry's people about the operation and the high rollers. The fellas running horse for handsome Harry will know what he's up to. Supposed to take you to some other plane of existence is what Sounds like handsome Harry. Sounds like handsome Harry's a little agitated. Apparently, even his clientele can't get their jollies while being shot at. Is he back at the plow house? He prefers to call it on Beljardin after the flower shop it's attached to. But yeah, he's there. Probably wishing he had a tit he could cry into. <laughs> you a sick motherfucker, Carly, but thanks for the help. Impression I get is that handsome Harry might not be so said. handsome once I you're done with him. I told her she was full of shit and walk right out. <laughs> If we don't fucking get a handle on this shit, business is gonna dry up. Nothing kills a fella's pecker like the fear of getting shot up. The yeah, asshole doing this to us, you overplayed his hand. Now that handsome Harry's here, we got all the men we need to handle the situation. Yeah, right. Magplant shows his face, he'll get what he deserves. All units, pursuit is called off. Abandoned search and return to patrol. Repeat, pursuit is called off. Abandoned search and return to patrol. <laughs> Waste him. There he is. Getting out of the line of fire. Hit him on the other side. Yeah, shoot out. Trouble. Trouble? Ain't no trouble here. Get your man over to the French ward. I need backup to lock this down. Sure, my guys will keep an eye on things over there. As usual. But look, it's fucking twice now we've done this. And twice I didn't get the district. You better remember, because I sure as hell won't forget. It 
took me months to figure out that Lincoln had survived the massacre at Sammy's and was waging a war against Sal Marcano. The Bureau didn't have a file on Clay, and I wasn't aware of his military training because his service records were classified. Otherwise, I, I might have started to connect the dots after the death of Richie Doucette. You Big Jim? Detective Jim McCormick. All right, Detective. I heard you have a problem with Marcano's drug operation in the French ward. Boy, it's this whole city's problem. His man, Doc Gaston's burrowed down like a fucking cockroach, pumping the whole city full of poison. Where's Doc Gaston operate out of? If I knew that, I'd have him in a cell. Biggest goddamn pusher in the city, and no one knows a fucking thing. The name Sal Marcano tends to do that to people. Fuck Sal Marcano. Best lead I've got is that one of Gaston's suppliers is coming to town. Gonna meet with one of Gaston's people. I can't get any closer, but your friend says you're good at getting information out of people. <laughs> I'll see what I can find out. Don't be shy about knocking around some of Doc Gaston's boys. Probably the only way to get him to talk. Hearing about a lot of dead dealers, the ones that aren't are finally talking, saying Doc Gaston's in the system beneath the Big Mouth Jazz Club. You're not gonna try to convince me to let you arrest him, are you? If I wanted to arrest him, I wouldn't have let you be a part of this. Justice might be blind, but it shouldn't be stupid, too. Go do whatever it is you're gonna do. Sure thing, detective. You lured out that hippie asshole Gaston. You gonna go deal with him? Sorry. Yeah, that's typical. Of a mentor, a teacher. Like you. God damn, get over here! Available unit. Reports of an armed Negro male in the French ward. Please investigate. Someone's trying to ask me. Some of your men. We're locking down the French war. All right, but this next piece of property was promised to me. And I don't like Welchers. John Donovan and Lincoln Clay embarked on a campaign of urban destruction this country hadn't seen since the Civil War. I got a name for your judge. Cornelius Holden. He just made a call to Luke. Cornelius is 60, but 
dipshits of this state first elected him to the Fifth Circuit in 1951. There's something else you should know. Those two men are Lamont Harris and Trey McCall. They were killed by a man named Hollis Dupree. Yeah, I heard he gunned them down when they showed up to his house asking for help. Hollis claims he was in self-defense, said he thought they were there to kill him. Cornelius is the judge that's presiding over the trial. So killing him might kick up a lot of noise. <laughs> Cornelius is an entitled southern asshole. Killing him is going to do a lot more than kick up some noise. Hopefully, it'll send a message that is long past the time that those cocksuckers went extinct. That's the car down there that Lou is talking about. That thing armored? I pulled the work order for it. It's a complete custom job. Tough as hell. It'll take a pounding, but it won't be impossible. Cornelius is scheduled to leave any time now, so this is your window. You follow a set route? Not since the trial started, but he still makes a stop or two on the way home. So you can either hit him then, or go after him when he's driving around. All right. And watch out for the cops. Go ahead and drive. There's something I need to play for you. You want to hear Marcano tear Uncle Lou a new one? Lou Marcano was bribing a district judge named Cornelius Holden, is that correct? Sal Marcano spent a lot of money getting Holden in his pocket. A lot of money. Judges like that don't come cheap. And with Holden out of the picture, Sal had to find someone else to legalize gambling. And that person was State Senator Walter Jacobs. That's right. You had one fucking job, Lou. Now it's to keep holding him one goddamn piece till after that room. What was I supposed to do? He wouldn't listen, Sal. It ain't my fault. Ah, uh, nothing's ever your goddamn fault. I swear, if you wasn't my brother, I'd clip you myself. Now listen here. I know a guy, a state senator named Jacobs. He's on the Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Committee. <laughs> Has a lot of influence. Can we get to him? Already have. He has a thing for fucking on women who ain't his wife. I don't want to twist this guy's balls out of the gate, you understand? We need to be smart about this. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, how about I throw him a fundraiser on the riverboat? Show him a real nice time. Get him laid, all that shit. This goddamn casino got me tapped, you understand? This goes down to shit or we're fucked, all of us. Well, I'll pick the guests myself. Make sure they know what's what. Then we'll take a nice long cruise down the bayou, get them all liquored up. 
Once he sees that payday, Jacob's is gonna do whatever we want. <laughs> Lou Marcano knew everyone. I mean, politicians, merchants, lawyers, bankers. He insisted on being called Uncle Lou and was basically the Santa Claus of the French ward. According to the police reports, Mr. Marcano and Mr. Jacobs were killed during a fundraiser on a riverboat. Thing about the bayou is it's a very big place. You could blow the living shit out of everything in sight and no one would even notice. <laughs> Ready to go when you are. Assume you already mapped out where the riverboat's gonna go. Lou's pretty fastidious about that kind of thing. Always follows the same path when he goes cruising through the bayou. Doesn't want anything to happen to his beloved Delphine. <laughs> gonna be the least of his problems. You recon the area? There's an old coal dumper that they have to sail past. I've already got it rigged to blow. You just need to connect the primer cord to each block and then set it off. Detonator's down by your feet. All right. Isolate and kill. Lincoln Clay specialty. What's wrong? Yeah, it's the boat thing, isn't it? Not saying it is, not saying it ain't. <laughs> you need to get over it. You were on, what, 40, 45 PBRs in country? 52. That's not the point. You don't know what it's like to get onto a boat knowing full well the damn thing's gonna sink. Gets old, man. Look, you blow the coal dumper. Boom. It hits the boat. Then you jump on board and kill Lou and those other assholes. 50-50, you don't even get wet. 50-50? Well, 40-60, but still. Thirty seventy at the worst. Upstairs. You're fan out. Watch the rest of the boat. This sure shit wasn't an accident. Did you see 
I think we tilted a little. Jesus! Ah! Shut this goddamn boat! Watch Jesus it! Christ! Jesus! Enough, you wop asshole! What the fuck, Lou? Take another step, me bitch. Can you think I give a shit about some politician? Please, please, I, I don't even know what's going on. I got money. You can have it. All of it. Just don't kill me. I don't want your money. I want you to send a message to your brother. Yeah. Anything. Oh, just say it. Just say it. 
Lord Almighty. State Senator Walter Jacobs was killed this evening in a fiery explosion aboard a riverboat. Local businessman Louis Marcano also lost his life, along with dozens of other wealthy donors there to attend a political fundraiser. When Lincoln left his gutted body on a statue commemorating Andrew Jackson, people were horrified. I mean, how could that be anything but a political statement? I understand you supplied the heroin Georgia was selling. Si, certo. Never wanted that in my city. Shit like that fucks with people's heads. Makes them crazy. Stupid. Brings down too much heat. Bourbon? No, I do not drink. Georgie, tell you why I wanted to meet. He said the nigger killed your brother. That you wish to disguise a deal between the two of us. They found Lou tied to a statue over in the French ward. He was gutted like a goddamn catfish. I apologize for your loss. Lou fucked up. It's his own damn fault. Look here. I'm building a casino across the lake. I had it all set up to get gambling legalized. Now it's all a goddamn mess. You want my money. We we'll need to get to the governor, and it ain't gonna be cheap. I want to hear you say it. Say what? That you want my money. Say those words, please. I want your money. Oh, this is good. <laughs> I will bring you the money, and in exchange, you will let me sell heroin in your city and you will not interfere in any way. Sure, whatever you want. That's not the only- You also wish me to kill the nigger. Hmm? I will do that for you as well. I enjoy killing the niggers. Jesus Christ. That's where Sammy's used to be. No one wanted to live there, so they uh, paved it over. Every now and then, something knocks the hell out of this country. Rattles it so hard, isn't much left but the foundation. And as painful as it is, we hope that this time, Things are gonna be different. And now when it's time to rebuild, we won't just repeat what we've done in the past. And that maybe justice and peace will finally prevail. Justice and peace are hard, ain't it? Sometimes too hard. So we take the easy way. Guess this is where we find which direction you and I are headed. Not coming to me to lock down this action. Don't break you free from your word. I still expect you to deliver this piece of the city to me. You need to let this play out, Cassandra. I understand your position, but I need to hear from everyone. I didn't call you to lock this shit down. That was your request. I'm sorry Cassandra's pissed, but I'm not here to do the work and just hand it to someone else on a silver fucking platter. I expect it to stay with me. Jesus, lad. Just give her the district and let's get on with our goddamn lives. I value a partnership, Cassandra, but I hope you understand. I gotta go with you to on this. God damn it! You no different than Marcana, Georgia, or Sammy. Except because you had a real chance to do some good for the holler. But you turned your back once again on the people who loved you. This is bad, Lincoln. We got too much going on to have a loose cannon like that out there. She needs to be dealt with. Sorry to say this, pal. Really, I am. But she's got to be done. I know. I'll take care of her. Don't worry. For now, we're done here. I'll circle up with you later on. 
Something bad's happening. like this. I'm here. Cassandra is dead. And you want me to take her place? No one's taking her place. But I do need someone to run your end of things. Make sure the money keeps coming in. There are men better suited. Soldiers. Anyone can pull a trigger. I need someone who knows when not to pull the trigger. I got no idea what's coming, but I do know those men will listen to you. I need you, Emmanuel. They need you. Will you help me? I will. Just like you ordered. Appreciate it. Fuck him off! Found him! Over here! We're gonna finish this game right now! and I can't shake the cops. Gotcha. Uh. 
You, you must be Vanegar. <laughs> My name is Lincoln Clay, motherfucker. Nigger, Lincoln Clay? These things mean the same thing. You ever heard of Enzo Conti? Think Sammy mentioned him a time or two? He's 61, old school mob. Been running Barclay Mills for decades. He started off exploring the railroad and moved on into industrial waste. All the heavy construction equipment and supplies for the casino, steel, concrete molds, that kind of thing, was all brought in via Enzo's trains. All that shit has to be worth millions. Enzo didn't just hand it over to any cat who walked in the door. Marcano's a felon, so he's got to have a partner, someone who's legit. If he does, that person's buried deep. I went through the paperwork, it's a goddamn maze. Which means we need to get Enzo to tell us who it is. According to my sources, Enzo's not a big fan of the casino, thinks anyone who's not Sal Marcano's gonna end up getting fucked. So I might be able to use that to flip him? Probably have to squeeze him pretty hard, but it's worth a shot. He's still involved in the railroad and has to store all that industrial waste somewhere, so I'd start there. Once I take his district from him, I'll give him a call from the motel, offer him an out. And if that fails, you could always give him a Hanoi hangman. <laughs> <laughs> Look who it is. Good to see you up and breathing, Connie. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. He got kind of crazy when you was taking over the warehouse in River Row, but I got out all right. Heard you know something about the Barclay train yard. Yep. This is more independent likes between the two of us. That friend of yours in the nice tan suit figured you need eyes and ears on Pete Santini's shipping operation. What's Santini up to? He's the protection man here in Barclay. You want to see whatever you put on a train end up where it's supposed to be? You got to pay Pete's people. Sounds kind of small time for one of Marcano's outfits. Give the man a prize. Ever wonder why this city's got so many guns? Marcano and Enzo got Santini running them. You bust up them deals and you put the hurt on Pete's business. All right. I'll see about getting my hands on that map. Be seeing you. You know the drill. Lean on Santini's people, see what they got to say. Holy shit, you really been to work on Santini's business. He ain't gonna be moving guns anytime soon. <laughs> God damn, you make an impression, boy. Didn't mean no offense by that. Listen, it's not setting well with Santini that people think they don't have to pay for protection. And it sounds like no one trusts him to deliver on gun deals like usual. Imagine that's got him pretty pissed off. <laughs> got him, Enzo, and Marcano looking weak. Going over to the train yard. Santini's there now, trying to figure out what the hell he's gonna do. Been fun, Connie. Keep it tucked up out there. <laughs> if you don't get to Santini, like Marcano will. Might as well put the poor you bastard out of his misery. Me. Goddamn hospital! 
even know. I really thought I could make this work. Guess you were wrong. Send whoever you can to Barclay Mills. I ain't letting this place go. Okay, my friend. But don't be forgetting me for that next piece of real estate we acquire. Eventually, I got a witness to come forward with information that implicated someone other than Sammy Robinson. A woman who lived near Robinson's place saw Sal Marcano and his son Georgie leaving the bar the night of the killings. I tried to bring Sal in for questioning, but all my efforts were blocked by a Judge Holden, who we now know was on the take. You're... Not what I expected. This was a mistake. I don't want any trouble. Someone told me you work at the dump, that you might have information for me. Now, your name's Maria, right? Mm-hmm. Maria Bava. I've only been at the dump a couple of months. Accounts receivable. I know. Glamorous. Paul Simmons runs the place. Everybody calls him Puppy, though. You've got to stop him. Stop him from doing what? Dumping waste in the bay, extorting drivers from other garbage companies, but that's... That's not the worst thing they're doing, is it? Mister, they're killing people. Puppy, <sighs> Mr. Simmons doesn't know how to keep his boys down on the phone. But he was arguing with one of the cleaners. Kept saying how they'd been paid to get rid of somebody. You know when these cleaners will be around? No, but some of the other guys who work for the dump might. I'll chase down information on these cleaners, along with the rest of the dump's business. It's gonna be all right, Maria. You did the right thing. Some of Mr. Simmons' people might know more about the illegal dumping and the bodies. You've really done a number on the dump. Scared the hell out of everybody there. Puppy, I mean, Mr. Simmons let me go today. You sound happy about it. Apparently, they're having trouble with the business and he can't afford to pay me. But truth be told, I'm glad to be out of there, away from that place. Is Puppy at the dump now? Yeah, why? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna kill him? All depends on Puppy. I'll be seeing you, Maria. I'm still not sure what Mr. Simmons got himself into. You think it's bullshit? You don't? I think he makes some good points. Are you Killing our people. Enzo's gonna want to know what fuck. Enzo. Sal Marcano called here not ten minutes ago. Told me come hella high water, I'm to keep this place running. Uh. Ain't nothing to fret about. We deal with that nigga and old Sal will be right. He's here! Fucking handle it! You done! <laughs> <laughs> fuck me. I'm gonna fucking die in a dump. Wish there was another way. <laughs> I need some of your boys in Barclay Mills. I'm of two minds when it comes to Lincoln's legacy. On the one hand, he was a, 
a brutal criminal who killed God knows how many people, a new breed of mobster, a prototype for criminals to come. Someone like that doesn't deserve the position history has afforded him. He should be forgotten, erased. But I also understand that Lincoln had a significant impact on the Italian mob in this city. He did what the Bureau wouldn't or couldn't do. He finished them. Jesus Christ! I'm gonna shot you in the goddamn face. Now we're even. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Time to call Enzo. Alright. Tile this. <clears throat> yeah. Barclay Mills is gone. All of it. Who the fuck is this? Take a guess. Got a lot of nerve calling me like this. You know who the fuck I am? I know exactly who you are, Enzo. You're a mob lieutenant who's just lost control of his district. Marcano will probably end up playing you next to Michael Greco. You goddamn coward. You want me dead? Be a man. Do it yourself. I don't want you dead, Enzo. I want to make a deal. A deal? <laughs> Jesus Christ, son. You need to get your fucking head examined. You tell me who's behind the construction of Marcano's casino, and I'll do what I can to keep that WAP asshole from killing you. Why the fuck should I think you could protect me from Marcano? Look at what I did to you. Meet me at the quarry. Next time, don't let me catch you napping. Kiss my ass. Put the gun away. If I wanted you dead, Enzo, I wouldn't have walked through the front door. All the same, I ain't taking no chances. Hold on here. I know you. You're Lincoln Clay, right? Lived with Sammy Robinson? Went off to Nam? That's right. <laughs> Christ, son, if I'd have known that, we could have saved ourselves a whole lot of trouble. Follow me. You probably don't know this, but Sammy and I went way back. He was a good man. Didn't deserve what happened to him. Hell, none of y'all did. And this shit with the casino? It's a giant fuck you from Sal to every man who ever worked for him. He wants to go legit and fuck the rest of us in the process. <laughs> Guess it's well past time I fucked him back. You know Remy Duval? Sure, he's the big shot on the radio. Without him, there's no casino. He owns the land, runs a construction company, you name it. So these are all fronts? Yeah, they're bullshit. Created a big paper trail to protect himself in case everything falls apart. And Marcano doesn't own any of the land? <clears throat> nah. It all belongs to Duval. He's no idiot. Long as it's in his name, Sal can't touch him. How do I find him? He lives up in Frisco Fields. But from what I hear... Olivia Marcano is keeping close tabs on him, forcing him to stay low. The last thing Sal needs is for his sole legitimate partner to get into trouble. We should get moving. I 
Looks like it's a little late for that. Deal's a deal. I don't know when I'm stuck in Let's go. Prison, and time keeps dragging on. Friends of yours, put the ass motherfucker. But that train people. I'm in Barclay and I'm up to my ass in cops. Right away. Get down, My mama told me, son. Always be a good boy. Don't ever play with gun. But I shot a man in Reno. Sticking our peckers in the ground and fucking this don't happen. Well, if they all freed me from this prison and the railroad train was mine, <laughs> I bet I'd move. Got it. They teach you that in the army? Nope. Sunday school. Back in the day, I'd have been out there fighting alongside of you. Or going up against me. I told you that piece of shit. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good for you, on. son. Shut the fuck up. You okay? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Said some of these men work for you. Not some of them, all of them. That should do it. Kai's through here. God damn. You like? No. I love. Give me there and I'll make a financial contribution to your cause. They got it blocked, but I bet we can bust through the gate. What about the train tunnel? The tunnel? <laughs> it's your call. Cover my ass. <laughs> oh, 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 that had to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I dropping? 
I got this girl, Henrietta. Shacks up at the Carousel Hotel in the Hollow. Smart as a fucking whip. I left a fucking bag with her. Should have all I need to get by. Two tears in a bucket. You know Sammy was proud as hell of you, right? Not just for the wartime shit, but for the way you fought through life before you came to him. How you watched over Ellis, and how you helped with Perla when she was sick. He admired you, and don't you ever forget it. Fucking Sal ain't half the man Sammy was. This is good right here. Sorry again about what happened to Sammy and Ellis. Appreciate it. How you doing, kid? My guys told me about Cassandra. I'm sorry that it come to that. Pull up a chair. Cassandra won't cause us any more trouble. Let's talk business. Turns out there's at least one sane motherfucker in Marcano's group. Enzo Conti backed away clean. No one's moving anything through Barclay Mills without paying up to us. The district's locked down just as you asked. Me and my boys are just waiting for your word to make ourselves comfortable. Last time we sat at this table, you called on me. Why? Because you know I'm the motherfucker who gets shit done. Always will be. Calling this one for Scaletta. We'll see how this all shakes out next time, Chalky. Until then, you can freely kiss my fucking arse. I earned this shit, Burke, so shut your fucking mouth and maybe you'll learn something. We'll talk later. Get on out of here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. What a prick. Turns out you were right. I gotta go. Thank you for this. Happy hunting, Donovan. <sighs> Miss Lancaster's helping me with a side project. You get a name at Enzo? Yeah, Remy Duval. He's not only building the casino, he also owns all the land where it's being built. Remy Duval? The jackass on the radio? His family's been down here a couple hundred years. Thinks it makes him everyone's massa. According to this, he heads up the Southern Union in his spare time. The Southern Union's basically the fucking clan. Right before I shipped out, Father James was with some other folks protesting the fact that the city didn't have any black cops. Southern Union came in and kicked the shit out of everybody they could get their hands on. Day after, they spray painted, God hates niggers across the front of his church. If President Andrew Johnson had actually executed those traitorous fucks, we wouldn't have this goddamn problem. Enzo also mentioned Olivia Marcano. Olivia's an outlier. Old Southern money. She's the one that was married to Sal's brother, Lucho. At least until someone slit his throat. And she runs Frisco Fields. Ever since Lucho died. She expanded his drug business and opened a PCP lab. Hmm. And since a lot of mafiosos live up there, she probably just has a place they can socialize. Well, it's usually in the back of some business. I never knew the mob had women as capos. She's there to keep Duval in line. Only people these entitled pricks listen to are other entitled pricks. So who are you gonna go after first? Duval. Since he owns the land where the casino's being built, killing him will muddy things up. You think hitting Olivia's businesses will help draw him out? I've known racist assholes like him my entire life. Black man like me running around terrorizing white folks. He ain't gonna be able to let that stand. His pride will bring him down. Hey, you know that bourbon's not cheap. Good luck out there. Long way from Point Verdun, aren't you, Bear? Decided it was time to branch out. Not really a lot for me in that organization anymore. So what's your new lot? Mind-melting narcotics. And I hear the best are coming out of Frisco, PCP, and it's cutting into my business. Okay, so where's the operation? Beats the hell out of me. But a while back, Miss Olivia Marcano hired a top-notch chemist named Bobby Bastian, tasked him with upgrading her operations, which will make it impossible for the small-time cooks to compete. Hell, they even got taxis delivering their shit. If I can get to Bastian's dealers, maybe they'll give him up, tell me something I can use against him. That ain't all. Where it is, Miss Marcano brought in a couple other eggheads from San Francisco. Get rid of them, and Bobby Bastian's gonna find himself nice and fucked. Put a beating on some of Bastian's guys, and maybe they'll tell you something useful. Look at 
You making it extra tough for Bobby Bastian to cook up his shit. It's been a bad couple of days for old Bobby Bastian. Far less of his product out on the street than he and Miss Marcano would like. Sounds like good news for you. I mean, it doesn't hurt. What are things looking like at the lab? Is Bastian there? Yeah, and in a fucking state. Apparently, the Marcanos aren't too happy about the cash flow disruption. Yeah. Well, let's see how they feel about losing their drug lab. And Bear, sell what you're gonna sell, but you better steer well clear of the hollow. Well, you know where to find Bastion. Go get the fucker. Look out! What? Poor so-and-so. Well, you're a brave one. Whatever you're gonna do, just don't leave me to Olivia. Shit. Only way we're gonna hold on to Frisco Fields is if you send some of your boys. <laughs> you shit me. Uh, don't worry, they're on their way. friend sent me. <laughs> I figured Johnny was lying when he said he had a friend. The cloak and dagger acts a bit much, though. You know Donovan? You could say that. I'm a special agent with Treasury. The IRS is looking into Olivia Marcano? Pretty sure she's smart enough to pay her taxes. I'm investigating a man who works for her, Chester Moreau. From what I've been able to piece together, he finances the Southern Union. Figured those racist fucks had factored into this somehow. The man I'm after, Remy Duval. A grand poopa or some shit. Whatever the connection, it's deep, it's secret, and it's bringing in a lot of money. Much more than you'd expect from a territory like Frisco Fields. The Bureau looked into it for a while, but no one's talking. Trust me, I get my hands on one of those bastards, he's talking. I thought as much. Only other lead I have is that the Southern Union's got stashes of propaganda scattered around the neighborhood. Might not seem like much, but you hit those. You'll get the attention of the people who matter. Yeah. Moreau starts losing money, he's gonna want to know why. I'll be back once I have something actionable. No one's really talking around here. I think you're gonna have to get to Chester's people directly. What do you need? Did you learn anything? Hit those bastards pretty hard, and all I got was a single word. Bel Air. Hmm. You know something? That tracks. Moreau is the majority owner of Bel Air Supermarket. As soon as you started hitting those racist assholes, the phones lit up. No one mentioned the Bel Air by name, but I did get a time, 10 p.m., and enough circumstantial evidence to tie it all together. Whatever's going on, it's happening at that supermarket tonight. I'll look into it. Lincoln, listen. The thing some of those guys were hinting at, it's bad, real bad. So go in quiet. We need to find out exactly what Moreau is up to, and we won't get another chance. You got it, Jackie.
Ain't this a life of adventure? Somebody was going home bloody or worse. <laughs> Think you'll make it to Gates? Maybe. What? On behalf of Mr. Moreau, Mr. Marcano, and the Southern Union, thank you for coming out tonight. Mr. Moreau, is that... Again, this is a fine specimen, no visible injuries or scars, and examined personally by Mr. Moreau's doctors. We didn't do that. Hey, there, look. That fella just got shot. What's he gonna do with that gun? Where'd he come from? Where are the others? Jess has got them niggas around Frisco. Just make it fucking quick, jig motherfucker. Go with God, motherfucker. You've pulled down everything Moreau and those Southern Union sickos built up. Good. You can find Chester Moreau at the grocery store. How'd you find him? I had a hunch, so I sat on an apartment in the French ward that's listed under his youngest kid's name. Fucker's been holed up there. He slipped back into Frisco with some cronies in tow. I think he figures if Olivia doesn't get to him, you will. You all right? Fuck no. Those poor people. I've got an old friend from the State Department who's going to help them. But Moreau. Moreau. That asshole Remy Duval. They've got to answer for what they've done. All of it. They will. You have my word. Jesus. When I found out what they were doing, you have to stop Moreau. down Bel Air and Frisco Fields. Just so we're clear, we'll not be using this place to fucking sell people. Find another way to make money from it. Still got a ways to go on keeping your word. But this here's a step in the right direction, Chalky. Uh, capo. That's when he turned his sights on Sal Marcano. Listen, it's like I said before. It's the same op who ran over in Vietnam. You want to bring down the dipshit in charge? You target their men and infrastructure. Eliminate their ability to fight back. And before they know it, they're standing there all alone. Ass hanging out in the wind. Sounds like your assessment of Remy Duval was spot on. Listen to this. Look at what he's doing to us. Our neighborhood, our homes. Half of one refused to sit by and watch as some rubber-lipped nigger runs roughshod over everything we hold dear. And what is it you hope to accomplish? I will strangle that motherfucker! That's what I'll accomplish! 
Apologize. Shouldn't use that kind of language. He is egging you on, Rem. You are much too important to be caught up in all of this. Is the situation unfortunate? Of course it is. But nothing he is doing changes anything. Let Sal's men handle it. Sal's men? Olivia, the people of this neighborhood expect me to protect them, not some greased-up WAP assholes. No, 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 I need to respond to this. I need to send a message to those niggas and the guineas that here in Frisco Fields, we take care of our own. This is a mistake, Remy. You could jeopardize everything we have been working toward. Our very way of life is at stake, and you think I give a god Damn about some casino. Sometimes I think you've forgotten your station in life, Olivia. A minute or so later, Olivia called Sal. Told him Remy's Southern Union pals were out looking for you. If you head back up there, I'm sure it won't be long before you run into some of them. Get them to tell you which hole Remy's hiding in. Yeah, once I'm done with that prick, Olivia's next. Getting to someone like her ain't gonna be easy. Between Marcano's men and all those rich white assholes she runs around with, they'll spot me coming a mile away. I need you to look at our options. Come up with a plan. Okay, I'm gonna look at our options and come up with a plan. What's wrong with you, man? Personal hygiene is very important. <laughs>
What now, nigga? What now? Have you? scene here in Frisco Fields is one of the city's most prominent citizens, Remy Duval, was savagely murdered. Witnesses report he was bound to a cross and set on fire. Let's see if we can get a statement from the police. Chief Wilson, you care to make a comment? It's those goddamn niggles. Every last one of them needs to be rounded up and shot. That's quite a statement, Chief. You need to wipe the shit out of your eyes, son. Take a look around. There's a goddamn war going on! Olivia's at the country club. Get in. I'll run you through the plan. <laughs> You're gonna love this. Marcano's having real estate problems. I still don't understand why Olivia Marcano was involved in any of this. By all accounts, she had two or three times the money that Sal Marcano had. Money didn't mean shit to her. From what I was able to piece together, she hired someone to kill Lucho. Wanted to run things herself. Bottom line, I think she got off on all that mob bullshit. We're fucked, Olivia. You understand? That fucking shit stain Duval didn't name us in the will. Now everything's going to his goddamn nephew. Have you actually reviewed the will? I read the part that said all the land I'm building my casino on is now going to Stephen motherfucker DeGamo. I read that part. Six months ago, Remy revised the will, but he never executed it. What the hell are you talking about? In order for the will to be valid, it needs to be signed. Well, God damn it, woman, I know that. What does it mean for us? It means I have grounds to contest. Remy and I were business partners in several ventures, and one of my holding companies lists the land as an ancillary asset. Sounds like a lawyer's wet dream. What's something like that gonna run me? I haven't the slightest idea. Nearly every cent I got is tied up in that goddamn casino. I can't afford a big legal fight. There's got to be another way out of this mess. Steven is coming to town for the funeral. I could arrange a meeting. Offer him a percentage of the casino's profits if he signs over the land. Yeah. Yeah, that could work. And then once he signs, we take care of him. All right, set it up. But my patience is at its goddamn end. Do you understand, Olivia? I'm tired of this bullshit. Have a little faith, Sal. Now, Mr. Clay entered the country club disguised as a waiter. Everyone in attendance was a rich asshole or part of the Southern Union, so getting Lincoln in there was easy. You put a black man in a uniform and he's damn near invisible. Hell, I drove in through the front gate and dropped him off. No one even gave us a second look. No. Surely, his uniform wasn't enough to get him past Mrs. McConnell's personal security detail. I mixed up a vial of fast-acting LSD. You know, same basic formula that we use as part of MK Ultra, and I gave it to Lincoln. He used a syringe to put a couple of drops into every drink he served. <laughs> Within a couple of minutes, anyone who drank that concoction was whacked out of their goddamn mind. Fuck me. What? What happened? I never learned how to tie a bow tie. <laughs> you sure you're up for this? Shit, I'll get in there, dose the guards with his military-grade LSD, and get to Olivia. Don't let those pricks goad you into anything. Remember, you won't be able to take any weapons with you. How's it going, buddy? Follow the driveway up to the left. You've got the case, the syringe is in there. And remember, the drug acts fast. It'll fuck up whoever gets a dose real quick. Good. No sense in giving anyone time to figure out what's happening. Let me get a look at you. If they kill you, at least they'll have something nice to bury you in. <laughs> fuck you. You see everybody else got here on time.
So do they have a suspect? Not a one. Old Earl set to send some of his boys out to the holler, rattle some of them monkeys' cages. I don't see it being one of the coloreds. Fucking apes was never too smart, but you don't watch them. They get vicious real quick. First, I'd like to personally thank y'all for coming to see our dear friend Remy Duvall off. I know with all of the violence that has reached its way into our community, it might have felt safer just to stay at home or even leave town. But you did what Remy would have done. You held your head high and you didn't run away. It's not exaggerating to say that Remy was a brave man. But his bravery is not what I'll miss most about him. What I'll miss most about Remy Duvall is that he gave this city... No, he gave us a voice. The man who murdered Remy robbed this city of someone who honored its history. Not only that, Remy respected our shared Christian heritage, which extends all the way back to Europe. Remy was a dear, dear friend of mine. A dear friend to all of us. In the coming days and weeks, let's honor his memory by taking back our city, by preserving the way of life we hold dear to Remy. Do you want to come over to watch the game on Saturday? When you're right, you're right. Gotcha. My wife, and I shouldn't have to beg for it is all. Oh, come on now. It's going to be okay, Cher. I mean, run. every last goddamn hey, dime is gone. On. Jesus. What am I going to tell the other brothers? We'll remind them to maintain white pride, brother. Because right now, it's the only thing the Southern Union has to its name. and bed sheets, chanting, hollering. I appreciate all of the pageantry, but something about the whole thing seems... Really so would have appreciated it. That's so lovely. Right. Hey, I've never bring actually that seen the nephew here. either. I had us some money. Maybe. Spill it. What do you know? Well, let's just say there was a <gasps> lot more to the Duval fortune when his daddy on. died. <gasps> they just look so filthy to me. Okay. It's nice seeing you. Hey, let him burn their bras. We find this shine who killed Remy. He's gonna wish you he was dead. So. Get over Rachel. here with that bottle, Jeez, man. Keep your voice down. What? Oh, he's probably one of the good ones. My condolences. You know we're gonna beat him to the moon, right? Damn red folk right. get the jump on the U.S. He's of resting with Jesus now. Say. I just... <laughs> I wish I could show you. It's all connected. You see? We, you, me, him. We're all connected. See you at Sunday Mass. <laughs> Goddamn Donovan. Yes. 
These people are out of their minds. I see Remy. No. Something is Wait. wrong. Oh. Get me out of here I now. Am Remy. Yes, ma'am. I want possessed. additional men placed on the front door and around back. No one's allowed in or out without my say so. Should I say something to the guests? Such as? You saw them. They've all come down with some kind of. <laughs> That for Ms. Marcano? Yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Go on through. Put it on the ball. Has DeGamo signed yet? No, ma'am. And they've been beating on him pretty hard. Take one of his hands. See if that changes his mind. We need to get away from here before whatever is happening downstairs gets worse. I think our Negro friend here is a little dim. Want something? Time to die. Dead asshole. Shoot that 12 bastard. o'clock. Fuck a last him. Your time is here, motherfucker. Switching out ammo. Get Sal will kill. <laughs> Never thought. You get shot. Precisely. Hmm. The first time I saw Lucio, he looked so handsome. Dash. He, hmm. he wore the finest suits, drove the best cars. There was always something. Terribly romantic about all of this. <gasps> there ain't nothing romantic about robbing and killing people. Well, maybe not. But it certainly was. Where's DeGarmo? Uh, DeGarmo? Uh, they have me out in a building. Down by the water. Uh, uh, thought you were gonna kill me. You ain't worth the trouble. <laughs> Nah, I ain't asking you a second time, boy. You've a sign over that land, hmm? I swear to Christ, I will bust every fucking bone in your body. You hear me? Hmm? I'm not, I'm not signing a damn thing. Drink your blood, motherfucker! Time <laughs> Gamo, I'm gonna get you out of here, but we need to move. Marcano's probably sending more men. Yeah. Okay. If they brought me here in my own car, 
think it's still near. Yeah. Oh, God. He's dead. Christ! My hand is ruined! I barely even knew Remy! Suspicious person in vehicle. Responding unit investigated. Okay, he is. Let's go. Just let me out here. One of these cops can help. Responding unit. Visual contact with suspect lost. Again, please stop the car. I want to get out. That's a bad idea. Let me the fuck out! How long you think you'll last out there? Marcano ain't gonna rest till he finds you. He broke my hand! Shit! I just want to go home. I know. Listen, I got a friend. He's gonna keep an eye on you for a while, keep you safe. At least till things calm down. Okay, thank you. You saved my life. Don't mention it. What happened to Steven DeGarmo? Lincoln left him with me, and I got him the hell out of there. And you still know DeGarmo's whereabouts? <laughs> like I tell any of you assholes. Good morning, Ms. Marcano. I'm here with your breakfast. Let's freshen this room up. Get some of that sunlight in here. That's better. Are you telling me Lincoln Clay did not murder Olivia Marcano? He didn't kill women unless he had no other choice. I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> Back in 67, we were in a bar in Saigon, and this gook bitch comes strolling in. Skirt barely covering her ass, and she starts offering everybody blowjobs. G.I. wants sucky fucky. Hmm? G.I. wants boom boom. Then she pulls out a grenade and she kills three guys. A couple Marines in the bar want to cut that bitch's head off, but Lincoln stops them. Keeps them off her until the MPs show up. If he wasn't going to kill that slag, he sure as fuck wasn't going to kill Olivia Marcano. Lincoln once told me he couldn't tell any other cheek. That the world doesn't work that way. <laughs> I spent the better part of 40 years trying to prove him wrong. But I was just lying to myself. Look at how we treat each other. Compassion is a sign of weakness. But greed is a virtue. The poor is considered morally corrupt, while every excess of the powerful is celebrated. We sent kids off to die. For what? So someone can make a few bucks? Lincoln was right. He was always right. <laughs> there ain't never gonna be another Dr. King or Bobby Kennedy. But there always gonna be another Sal Marcano, another Sammy Robinson, another Lincoln Clay. We are cruel and wicked people. Look who's decided to grace us with his presence. There's no one left to stand in our way. We run this city now. You only ask my guys to secure one of these rackets. Fine, no skin off my ass who locks shit down. The only part I give a fuck about is who's running the show. And by your choosing, that's me. You and this giddy cunt more action's only gonna make him even more intolerable than he already is. It's bad enough every time I leave one of our good time gatherings here, I got the stink of garlic pussy all over me. This turf's going to the Irish. I got big plans for this one, lad. And it starts with a statue of Marcano getting arse fucked by a goddamn badger. Cassandra was a hell of a woman. It's unfortunate she let her pride drag her down in the end. Failed to see the bigger picture, but I still admire her spirit. It may not have all played out the way I would have liked, 
But we're here and we're making money. And Lord knows I'm a hell of a lot better at being alive than I am at being dead. I know none of this has gone quite as smoothly as we would have liked, but you've done something real over these last few months. Changed this town in a major way. And I'm proud as hell of you. Fuck. Fuck! You know how long I've been waiting for someone to stand up and be a man of his word? And in all my fucking days, you, Lincoln Clay, are the first motherfucker to do it. Thank you. You've done a hell of a job, Lincoln. Couldn't have done a better job myself. Probably. Who'd ever thought I'd end up with you two motherfuckers? You're not wasting any time, are you? Your little rampage is going to attract attention. Attention from people I don't care to associate with. Yeah, imagine not. Thankfully, closing off your loose ends is as simple as tossing around some super grade. <laughs> With any luck, this will keep them off my ass. For a little while, anyway. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's still the matter of killing Georgie and Sal. You should get a kick out of hearing this. Who'd you send? Oh, I did it myself. Ear to ear, just like you wanted. Any sign of Gamo? No. He's gone. I look everywhere. It's like he never even fucking existed. I am leveraged out the ass. Called in every favor, and none of it made a goddamn difference. We're fucked. I am fucked. Oh, now that's bullshit. We still got some men. I say we hit the streets. We're gonna find that cock. Every low-life ball of piss in this city smells blood in the water. My blood. You understand? And they step over their own mother if it meant being the one to clip me. I wouldn't last ten minutes out there. Don't let them come in here and fuck us. There's got to be something we can do. You call up whatever men we still have left. You tell them to meet us up there at the casino. And when Lincoln Clay shows up, we'll do everything we can to plant that goddamn nigga in the ground right next to us. That's what we can do. Go on, get the fuck out of here. Go! God damn it! Should have known that Marcano would go to ground at the casino. You can take the bridge up there so it's a straight shot. You know, none of this would have happened without you. It's either this or right away in some goddamn office. And once you've killed those assholes, you come and find me. I'll be hanging around over at the Padres. You got it. You give them hell, champ. Yada, 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 yada. Where they at? Just want to get this shit over with. Tired of waiting around. He's got some kind of voodoo protecting him. Voodoo? Fuck. All he got is luck. And his luck runs out right fucking here. The fuck? How did he get past us? How did this... Motherfucker. Oh. I always thought you were my friend. <laughs> that you had me and Ellis' backs. But it was just an act. You didn't kill me because I said no. You killed me because you thought you owned me. Owned all of us. It was never about us. It was about my old man. My father. I did anything for him. Same as you and Sammy. 
then you understand why I have to do this. Hell of a sight, ain't it? You know, when I first come to this town, it was nothing more than a backwater shithole. Now look at it. Let me see your hands. Whatever was between us is over, you understand? It ended the second it was you coming up them stairs instead of my son. You want a drink? Had this imported from Scotland. <laughs> Single malt. Now, usually I'm a bourbon man, but I figured I'd order something with a little more class for when the casino opened. Not much of a chance of that happening now, is it? Don't look that way. Take a seat. I ain't going nowhere. Hey, not bad. I think I still prefer shine. You know, a month or so after my brother Lucho died, I started having nightmares. I had this one where I was on a boat. A giant wave come, knock my ass overboard. I hit that water and sink like a goddamn rock. There's another one where cotton mouths biting me all to hell. But the one that really got to me was Georgie's funeral. He's laid out in that shitty little casket. Neck cut, same as Lucho's. <laughs> yeah, that one really got to me. It'll come around again every three or four days. I have one while I'm back in Nam, sleeping in a foxhole. All of a sudden, these dark figures come out of the shadows. I try to fight them off, but they hold me down, tie my hands together, stuff a muddy rag in my mouth so I can't scream, can't warn the men sleeping next to me. And then I got to listen as all those men die. I imagine that's not gonna go away anytime soon. No. I imagine it won't. And then this. <laughs> this was all to try to keep mine from coming true. Look how that turned out. I buried a lot of people. More than I can count. The one I never wanted to see go down in that cold ground was my son. And yet here we are. Yes, sir. Here we are. My son is dead. And I'm having a drink with his killer. I'm not gonna apologize for what I did, you understand? If I did, I'd just be lying. 
I don't have it in me to feel shame for the things I've done to others. Never have. Didn't come here for an apology. Nah. I know you did. Goddamn, I was right about you, wasn't I? <laughs> I knew it the second I fucking saw you at the country club. Men like us, we're just wired up wrong. There's only one thing we know. One thing we're good at. I'm gonna be waiting for you, Lincoln Clay. This won't be the last time we see each other. I know. What are you waiting for? Fucking do it. Fin- Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Take it, you're Lincoln Clay. So they tell me. I told Sal this fucking casino would be the end of him. I meant it figuratively. Shit has a way of turning on you, doesn't it? Especially if you piss off the wrong person. <laughs> you know who I am, son? Guessing you're Leo Galanti. Take a little walk, you and me. Probably no surprise, but the rest of the commission wants you dead. You and anybody else that had anything to do with this. What happened here was between me and Marcano. Well, I understand that, son. We all do. But this business makes you paranoid, irrational. They see Sally, a pile of shit. They start wondering if someone's gonna serve them a plate of their own. So you're here to decide if you're coming after me? No. I'm here to deliver a message. You made your point, son. This all ends right here. Right now. I got no quarrel with y'all. Once a month, Sal kicked up 20% of his net cash only. Same man's been delivering it for, oh, I don't know, 40 years or so. I see no need in deviating from that, do you? No, sir. Well, in exchange, you run things as you see fit. Want to sell heroin, want a whorehouse on every other corner? Makes no fucking difference to me. The only thing that matters is 20%. And what if I decide to walk away? Leave all this behind? Then this will be the last time we see each other. Best of luck to you, son. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Him and Georgie both. 
That's the best news I've heard in ages. Can we get an amen, Padre? So, what happens now? What do you mean, what happens now? It's over, done, finished. I ain't talking to you. Just cause Sal McConnell's dead, Lincoln, doesn't mean it's over. Now, what you did and the size of it all, you created a storm in this here city, and it's gonna take a long time for it to dissipate, if it ever does. With Marcano dead, New Bordeaux belongs to me. Ain't nobody left to stand in my way. <laughs> you, you can't be serious. The, the point of this wasn't to replace Marcano, it was to remove him. This city's done gone through enough. It doesn't need another you, Sal Marcano. This city? You've got to be fucking kidding me. This city is a cesspool. It's where people come to fuck and drink and get high. You watch your filthy mouth. It's what the city is, Padre. If it's not giving another Sal Marcano, it's going to shit one out. He's right. If it ain't going to be me, it's going to be somebody else. Probably somebody worse. Amen. Thanks. Hey. You remember what you told me when you came back from the war? How, how, how you wanted to, 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 to go to California? Leave all this behind? And just start all over? Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Well, it ain't too late, Lincoln. You can still go. Go! And don't look back. Listen, I'd love to stay here and debate the merits of one crime boss over another, but I've got a schedule to keep. Bit of advice, though? The scumbags you've been working with, kill them. All of them. Bury them before they bury you, buddy. Oh. I'll be seeing you, Padre. God forgive me for standing by you through all this, Lincoln. But if you do anything except leave, we're finished. You hear? Father. A man's soul can only carry so much. And mine is on the verge of breaking. Sal and Georgie are gone. And after all the shit we've been through, we run this city. After all the bullshit, it's almost impossible for me to wrap my brain around the fact that we actually did it. You're a fucking saint, Lincoln. And I'm honored to know you. We're not here because of what I did, or because of what any of y'all did. We're here because we stood together. And as long as we stay strong, ain't no one ever gonna fuck with us. After he killed Sal Marcano, Lincoln Clay took over. But he wasn't content just to run the city. He expanded out across the South into Florida and even the Carolinas. There's so much money coming in, and he's been smart with it. He spreads it around, makes sure the right people get paid and stay paid. The city's favorite son, hmm? Yeah. Rebuilding the hollow, buying up Frisco Field, reopening the theme park, all that money and goodwill. He thinks it's made him untouchable, but no one is untouchable. He might have plastered his name across a few schools and hospitals, uh, made donations to a charity here and there, but nothing absolves him of his crimes. That's why I agreed to do this documentary. I want to shine a light on the real Lincoln Clay. Lincoln gave in to everything. Drugs, booze, prostitutes, you name it. He made a dollar. He was involved. Seeing him on the news, strutting around. Sometimes I... I think he should have died over at Sammy's. 
with all the rest of them. That'd be uh, kind of a piece in that. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated? I don't remember. At home, I believe. I don't remember. At home, I believe. Let me tell you where I was. A muddy hut in Vietnam. Slowly dismembering an old woman, cutting her apart bit by bit. And do you know why? Because her son was an NVA officer. And hurting her was the only way to make him talk. I don't understand what this has to do What he told with... us saved the lives of an entire platoon. That's 42 men. Men that lived another day because I was willing to take a saw to that old woman. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I believe that... Sit down and just shut the fuck up! I did a lot of terrible shit over there. In the name of this country. Shit that will haunt me for the rest of my life. But I did it because I believed in the fight. I believed what this nation stood for. So, to be sitting there ass deep in mud with that old woman scattered all around me and hearing that the president of the United States had just been fucking murdered, well, I knew right then and there that I couldn't let that stand. That I would find a way to make it right no matter how long it took. What are you saying? I'm saying that Sal Marcano and a group of conspirators murdered Jack Kennedy. Oh, that is the most absurd thing I have ever heard. I assumed you would say that. Don't fucking move! Some folks are by this... You're out of your mind. Oh, you... I don't hold anyone's ambitions against them, Senator. And you certainly were ambitious, weren't you? You went to law school, and then you became a district attorney, and then the United States Senate. After Sal Marcano died, I went through his files. Imagine my surprise when I saw your name over and over and over and over again. The mob wanted Jack Kennedy dead, and you were more than willing to help. But there are cameras everywhere. There's witnesses. No, I want you them to get see that, these stupid assholes, no. because then they will know that I am not finishing with you. I am starting with you. No. Oh. 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 And they're next. <laughs> Gentlemen, God, what? Some folks inherit. 